Hello everyone, Happy New Year and welcome to Harlequins Live. We're live at the stoop and as you can see, it's a cold one. We still can't have you in the stands, so hopefully you're at home with something delicious with the central heating on and you're looking forward to another cracker. It's Gallagher Premiership time, Harlequins against London Irish. We're looking for the first home win of the season and I've got a feeling it's coming today. Lots for you to get involved with today. As always, we're giving away some great prizes, including an official Adidas Harlequins fleece. We've asked you to send in some of your favourite pictures and some of the memories you brought up, some of the pictures you've sent in have been absolutely fantastic we'll be going through those throughout the show today it's not too late to send them in so whatever social media you're on make sure that you tag us and get your pictures in and we'll be announcing the winner later on today um, now like all clubs, Harlequins have had to make some unfortunate cancellations. There are so many moving parts, so many changes that have had to have been made. I wasn't going to guess at anything. So I had a chat with Graham Bowerbank, the head of rugby ops here at Quinns, to talk us through it all. This is what he had to say. Graham Bowerbank, head of rugby ops. The players have had a week off. I'm assuming you haven't. You're probably the busiest man at the stoop at the moment. Last time we spoke was Boxing Day. We won't talk about the results. It was snowed off. Uh, but since then, sort of talk me through what's happened, what you've been up to, what the clubs had to do to make sure we can have a rugby match today. Well, post-Bristol, um, we obviously had one positive um, from, from a COVID point of view, um, <laughs> sadly. Um, and Bristol had one as well, um, both in the front row, which meant that not only was the person who, who has COVID then isolated for 10 days, we then had to go through a, a track and trace process of everybody through the whole of that game. Um, who came into contact both with our player and the Bristol player um, and there's a number of sort of connotations that goes with that around how you judge it um, during the game so that took about a day um, and then following on from that um, you then have to start making decisions about whether or not you can actually field the team more than anything safely um, you know so so you lose most of your front row um, number of number of second rows because uh, they tend to be the guys that are in close contact with people at that point um, and then you got to make a decision as to whether you can actually do this properly and safely and and within the integrity of the tournament as much as anything so um, we obviously lost that game, um, but there are other things at play as well. So given um, how long last season ended up becoming, um, we're now in a position where we have to manage players' load um, and make sure that they actually get breaks within a season that's just jam-packed with rugby. Um, and we're there, all the players were due to have one week prior to the end of January. Um, so the logical decision then, you know, if we, if we are in a position, firstly you decide whether or not you can do the game. Uh, that's obviously the prime thing. We all want to play, we all want to get out there. And then it's, well, we can't now's the time to take the break so it was a very very quick turnaround of right boys you know we are gonna you know we're gonna give you a full full week's worth of, of break um, but then that then has knock-on effect onto what the testing program is so the testing program is is that you all follow the same thing um, and everybody gets tested on a Monday but that would mean that the players wouldn't get the break that we needed them to have during that time um, and so we called on uh, DHL to see whether or not they could help us with testing um, not with the testing itself but actually getting the tests from where we are in Guildford um, across to Antrim which is where Randox have their laboratories that do the testing um, and it's not just a case of oh you can do a, a lateral flow test or you can just go and use anybody the whole idea is is that the integrity is kept by using the same company and therefore all the results have the same standing um, we had some fun with that uh, DHL were brilliant as they always are really really great in terms of their help but um, our friends at customs decided that they'd take control of them for a little while so there was a little bit of to and fro in a little bit of panic I'll be brutally honest it was are these actually ever going to get out of there um, but yeah here we are today um, a lot of really really good decisions have been made I think um, probably some tough decisions but they're good decisions and they're the right things to do in terms of putting people's safety first um, and making sure that the overall picture is seen rather than just one thing at a time um, and yeah it looks like we're going to get a game on which is brilliant I hope so and <coughs> proof if we needed it that having a partnership with someone like DHL is a two-way street it sounds like it would have been very very difficult to achieve what you did at the time of year that you achieved it without their contribution and in terms of the, the 
decision to be made then in whether the game is going to go ahead or whether it's going to be cancelled. How much of that comes down to the club? How much of that comes down to, to Premiership rugby or, or the competition that the game would be in at the time? Uh, look, I mean, we have a really good relationship and, a, and I think all 12, 12 clubs do with, with PRL because effectively we're partnerships in it. But it's to do with the RFU and all of the medical protocols that go with it. Um, and ultimately, you know, these, these protocols are put in place as recommendations. So you, you, you look at it and, and you have to take the decisions yourself. So we, we had meetings with the RFU, we had meetings with the PRL, um, and those guys look at what you've pulled together. So you clip all of what the players have done, all of the contacts. So there's, there's a number of them are to do with face-to-face -face contacts um, and how long that face-to-face -face contact is for within the context of the game. So even, for example, you know when, when guys are scrummaging down, it's deemed that actually that, that, that's not a close contact in a scrum because they're not face to face and actually all of their breathing is going downwards so they're not actually breathing at each other um, and so yeah I mean obviously it takes a long time to, to kind of pull all of that together but yeah it, it kind of comes in the right way and then Obviously, you know, there's this new variant that, that's flying around at the moment and it's 70% apparently more transmittable. Uh, I think the other day they said one in 30 people in London had it. And Terrifying. so it is, to a certain extent, we're a little bit shrouded from it. You know, we, the behaviours of the boys and the staff and everybody within the whole of this business. And, you know, hopefully I speak for everybody in the premiership. You know, there's been a few mishaps, but actually everybody's desperate to play rugby, desperate to get out there. You know, we're, we're still receiving so much support from all of our fans, which is brilliant um, you know and you guys are getting loads of support at, at the weekends when we're at home you know people are just desperate for a little bit of interaction with a game that they love but we've had a load more regulations if you want to call them thrown at us this week and I, and I say that in the nicest possible sense because they're clearly needed um, but at the same time it just brings brings home where it's at you know so things like you know we're, we're now not allowed to sit in meeting rooms together we're not allowed to eat together um, you know everything you know the, the easy thing is 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 to mask everybody up but it's just everybody's doubling down now in terms of you know the need for us not to be you know I think you probably saw Bristol last night you know where, uh, yesterday when they beat Exeter they actually did their their post-match song out on the field which is just it, it, you know you you kind of look at it and you can amuse yourself with it as much as anything because it, it, it it's it's people that are taking things seriously you know they've moved uh, substitutions warming up people on TV may not, not see it and it's not that obvious but you're actually warming up at the other end now so that when your team score a try and you're warming up at that end what was happening was all the substitutes were jumping on um, the player who'd scored celebrating uh, one of the teams apparently lost a couple of players from those celebrations um, and so they've now moved it um, so that you're warming up at the other end of the field. So many micro decisions yeah. being made all the time just to make sure that we can play rugby and I'm so glad that you're in the process of making these decisions and that we are going to have a game today. Hopefully we can have another chat like this soon when it changes again because it inevitably will but in the meantime keep up the good work mate, thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Plenty of information to take in there from Graham but hopefully that puts your mind at ease and you know that we're doing everything that we can here to make sure rugby goes ahead but most importantly that it's safe as well. Uh, from one big name at the stoop to another, it's now time to have a catch up with Jerry Flannery ahead of kickoff. Just so you're having a conversation with Declan there in the midfield, was that a friendly one or was it a pre match stare down? Uh, a kind of a mix. We started off friendly, and by the end of it, I was threatening him, making sure his, his, he doesn't get his Irish boys up too up for the game. But uh, it's good to see him because he was my coach when I was at, at Munster and in Ireland. So. Well, putting that behind you, it is a big game today. We've had a difficult run here at the Stoop, but we've played three very good teams across Europe in the Premiership. Today's an opportunity to right a few wrongs. Um, yeah, well, we can't afford to keep keep this losing streak going, so we've got to we've got to change it up, and uh, we've we've got to pitch today. That's the that's the thing is that we didn't we probably physically pitched against against Bristol, but we weren't accurate enough in the way we played, which was disappointing, particularly when we started well during the first half. Um, but now it's, 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 the pressure is on us now today, so we've got to deliver. Looking into your realm, very strong pack today and welcoming Simo back into the second row. That's a, that's a big win. Yeah, I think uh, Simo, Simo has a, 
how would I say he's he, he brings a physicality to, the, to to our pack when he plays. I have to admit, I think I think um, Glenn Young has done a really good job of running our line out uh, since Steph and Sim have been out, and and Glenn has really really performed in the wider channels for us during general play. But it'll be good to get Simo back in and, and get a little bit of what he brings, a little bit of steel into the pack as well. It's been an interesting time in terms of cancellations and, and the gap that we've had through no fault of anybody since Boxing Day. It's not something that you'll have experienced as a player. It's not something that these lads have experienced either. How has this sort of period and no man's land been over the last sort of 10 days or so? Uh, it's... It's unusual, but you just have to be adaptable. And uh, to be fair, the players, the players, we just try to maximise what we can do and be productive with our time. So, when if we feel that we we, we, we can't risk training, to, you know, physically together, we'll, we'll practice some socially distant training. And uh, I suppose that you just you have to adapt on the days. Like no one no one preps you for this when you're when you're starting out coaching or starting out as a player that you've got to prepare for these things. So it's about being adaptable and just making the most out of the time that you get. Gussie said uh, after the last game that the warm-up didn't feel right. I'm looking at the players behind you now. Body language seems positive. Everyone seems raring to go. Is that something that you've been been really keen to sort of reinstill in this group? Uh, what the warm-up? Well, no, just in terms of the the, the attitudes. If that was something that was picked up by by Guzzi after the Bristol game. Uh, well, personally, I, I I don't know. In that, okay. like, I've I've been involved in lots of games where the warm-up has seemed off, and the players come out and they tear into it, and been involved in games where the warm-up has seemed amazing, and then the players come out and they're completely flat. I think you try and judge it over the course of the week in terms of. Uh, how like how the players have, have, have taken on board the knowledge from the start of the week? Uh, have they been diligent with that? Have they been applying themselves when you've asked to it? And then you judge it across the week. Like a warm up is a 15 minute block before a game, and some players you got to accept. Some people have you got to have some guys who are bouncing off the wall. Some guys are quiet naturally. I think you just look for certain people as barometers and say if the quiet, if the if the loud guys are quiet, maybe there's something off. Maybe it's just that individual. But I think it's more a case of the week. And uh, this week's training has been good. We had a you know we had a shortened week, but I felt the players when we when we couldn't train physically together, they took on a lot of the knowledge well. And then when we did get to train, they were very accurate with it, which was good luck today, Jerry. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Regular viewers of Harlequins Live will know that we are on a quest to introduce you to some of the people who this club would be the same without. Uh, today it is a man who if you've not seen him around the ground you'll certainly be familiar with his work. Steve Barton's welcome. Um, are you the official club photographer? Is that your title on the business card? Uh, I think that's fair to say yes. Uh, through Getty Images of course who are partners with Harlequins providing their visual content. So this isn't the only gig you do but it's the best one? It's right up there I would say yeah. It's uh, photographing rugby which is not a bad thing to do uh, for a job uh, so yeah very enjoyable. Now we're lucky enough to have Steve for two parts today. Half time, we're going to be going through some of his favourite images. But uh, before that, let's talk about rugby photography in general, because everyone who's watching this will have seen at least one of your images, and they sort of leave a lasting impression with everyone. You're almost creating like a tapestry, like a legacy, aren't wow. you? Wow, that's yeah. Well, that's making it sound uh, very epic. Um, <laughs> Basically what we're trying to do is uh, tell the story of the day, match-wise, um, and we're also providing content for the club for commercial partners, um, for management as well. Uh, we often get people asking for pictures of things like scrummages and that sort of thing. So it's, um, it's grown as well in terms of what it encompasses in the club. Uh, the photography is used a lot more, so you'll see a lot more pictures around the outside of the ground, in the dressing rooms, uh, changing room areas. So it's become quite an important part of the club, really. Um, all the boxes that you see, which are obviously aren't being used at the moment, but there's a lot of imagery is being used everywhere around the clubs, which is a great thing, really, because it wasn't always like that. Where's the most interesting place you've seen one of your images? Oh, that's very hard to say. Well, I think one that took me back was a picture of Mike Brown right outside the uh, away dressing room, which was enormous of him shouting. So <laughs> if you were leaving the dressing room, you certainly knew you were at the stoop. Um, that was quite an interesting place to see a picture used, I'd say, yeah. Well, if you've got one of him smiling, let me know, because I think <laughs> well, that'd go for a fortune. We, we might see one of those later on, actually, so we might be in luck. Do you ever think when you take a photo, I mean, I'm sure you know straight away whether it's a great one or not, but 
do you think about the the impact that's going to have or, or where it might end up or how far down the line people might still be admiring that work Ooh. or is it more about the, the here and the now well photography obviously uh, press work which is a lot of what we do is very instantaneous so it's about uh, either getting the try or the try celebration or a goal or a goal celebration and getting it out online very quickly uh, but I'm very conscious that working here to, you know with a club which has got 150 years plus of history you're also documenting the club so it's about um, making sure you get as many pictures of those players that play in the courses as you can even if they play maybe once or twice um, I think it's quite important that this, you sort of keep up the historical element of the club so I'm quite conscious of that actually there is some responsibility I think attached to it to do that Full disclosure, I always get a telling off for this because we meet these fascinating people. We think, we'll do a couple of minutes on this, but then I ask more questions and it overruns, but hopefully you're enjoying it. I certainly am because you mentioned how instantaneous it is now. Mm. You take a photo, it seems mm. to appear online almost instantly, but that hasn't always been the case and you've been involved for a little while. Can you just quickly talk to me about the film days? Because I really glamorise that sort of old-fashioned yeah. approach well, to it. That's, uh, well, 20 years ago, which makes me sound quite old, I mean, we were shooting film still. I think really the digital takeover or changeover for me didn't really happen to 2003. Um, huge difference. I mean, now the camera is connected via a, a wireless system, so we can send the picture direct from the pitch side to Ali, who's sat up in the press seats, and he can get it onto Twitter within you know a couple of minutes of the moment happening. Uh, film days, I mean, you're given a bag of film, uh, you go to the game, uh, you shoot the film, and you'd have to get it devved and printed or scanned in. Um, so we would we'd actually dev film at stadiums, so you'd do it in the toilets if there was no wire room facility. Um, you would then make prints and drive them around Fleet Street, dropping them off in the early hours of you know Sunday morning. Uh, so it's a very, very different world. Um, yeah, it sounds romantic, but I can remember it being quite uh, messy, uh, labour-intensive, stressful. Um, but I guess the joy of it was you, you dev a roll of film and you look at it and you see, you know, that's the first time you saw it, is when you looked at it under a loop. So you think, wow, look, there's a picture, that's the picture we're going to send out. So I think there's probably less choice for uh, outlets to look at. But... Uh, yeah, it was, uh, well, I'm glad I went through it, I have to say. Yeah, it was, uh, things seem a lot easier now. Did you ever have one of those days where you thought, oh, I'm not sure if I've got a usable photo today? Um, well, being a professional photographer, obviously that, 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 that sort of thing wouldn't happen. But <laughs> I think that there's a stress level attached to it of, um, you know, have I got that moment? And I think there's a lot of things that happen during a match. Um, there's a lot, there's some luck attached to it. I would say, you know, a, a player could score a try behind the posts and you might have the bad angle, you can't see their face. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't want to say I don't want to see a lot of tries, but pushover tries are notoriously bad for who's actually scored it. Oh, You've got a pile of bodies. See, so. we've got, we can relate there, because sometimes yeah. when I'm commentating, I'll, I'll just make a lot of noises and hope that the wrong name doesn't creep out of my mouth. It's a nightmare, isn't it? It is. And I think that's... Um, and, and the game has changed as well. I would argue now that compared to 20-odd years ago, defences are better, so there's less line breaks, there's less opportunity to get players running in open play with the ball. Uh, defences are so much better better that the time you've got from the point the player gets the ball and runs with it to the time that they're tackled is very short so in an ideal world I'd like you know pictures of players all running with head up so you can see their face so that has more um, usefulness long term but that doesn't happen so much so particularly in the forwards I mean there's a lot of players out there who are doing a lot of hard work who always may, might complain so oh, I never see any pictures of me and that's because you don't really get to see their faces as much as you'd like nothing to do with their work rate I just like to make that clear <laughs> we're not throwing anyone under the bus. Um, I can see this, uh, the photography chronicles becoming like the grass chronicles and going on <laughs> and on because I could chat to you all day. Remember, we've got a competition in to win the official club fleece. This is me holding up an air version of it because I don't have it with me right now. So make sure that you do keep sending your pictures in and we'll be back with more from Steve at half time. But this has been absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Pleasure. As we've spoken about on a number of occasions, we're very much looking forward to welcoming Simo back to the starting 15 today. He's a great friend of the show. He's a huge character here at the Stoop, and we caught up with him ahead of the match. First game of the year against Exeter, just caught my knee, inside of my knee, um, coming off a restart, and that was that. So ended up um, being a medial tear 
and uh, I was in a brace for a bit and rehab back and, and now I'm here. It's all too common these days. I've had a few of them recently. Um, we've got a great team who look after us, get a lot of individual treatment. Everything's laid out in terms of your rehab, but it's still, it's, you're quite separated from the main, main squad. COVID aside, it's, it's nice to be back involved, back team training. It's been a challenging build up for both of us, I guess. I look back probably to September when we played them at the Stoop. They had a, a younger, more inexperienced team out and still gave us a, well, we nearly lost. So it was a really close run game. I'm expecting a, a really big challenge. I mean, same as every week, it's the Premiership. It's such a tough competition. Yeah, we kind of split. So Glenn will run the attack, I'll run the defence. It's just giving him a helping hand because it's a, it's a big job. There's a, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, a lot of work that needs to be done that um, he's been great at. And it's just giving him a helping hand. I guess there's a physical um, there's a physical aspect to it, especially around Maldi, get, making that, making sure that's right. There's technical detail, but also it's uh, fronting up and, and, uh, and doing a job there. Well, now it's time to have a chat to the ghosts of Quinn's future. Uh, gentlemen, how are you? That was terrible, wasn't it? <laughs> that was Not as terrible as your haircut, though, oh, man. Did you do that yourself? That took, what, like five seconds to get that in there? Um, mate, talk me through that, because last time we spoke, you had a lovely head of hair. You were looking forward to Christmas. Got a little bit boring in Guildford, did it? Yeah, pretty much. So, like, I just, it was growing out. It was getting too long on the sides, and I thought, just bring back the mullet. I had a mullet back, back this time last year, so I just thought, bring it back. And, um, yeah, it's looking a bit... It's because growing out though, she she is growing out um, and we're getting there. You are a great advocate for lifting lockdown and bringing back the barbers. <laughs> now, now, Mac, you're a friend of the show. Gentlemen, uh, the fans might not have met you yet. Firstly, Will, hello. Uh, you. We can't. We can see your eyes, but we can't see your face because, of course, COVID safety first. Yeah. But you've come into the Quinns Academy through the more traditional route, haven't you? Yeah. Well, uh, I started when I was. Uh, I came into the DPP about when I was 13, 14 years old, okay. um, and I just came into uh, Cranley School, and then I uh, kind of just went up through the Surrey Rugby Program, through the Quinns Program, and then eventually got here. And I think it's just. Looking back on it, it's just it's a real privilege to be here, really, because it's myself, Oscar Beard, and Finn Baxter, and we all came through together. It's gone all right, though, hasn't it? As you said, uh, Cranley, you've done you've done well in all of those competitions. People would have expected you to. You've got some England age group honours as well, uh, and fingers crossed in the not too distant future, we'll see you out there in the quarters. Fingers crossed, yeah. Um, but it's been a little bit uh, different for you, though, Matt, as you've actually played Championship rugby for London Scottish already. So tell us how you've ended up here at the Stoop? So uh, last year I'd, uh, I played for Scottish um, and it was, yeah, it was quite good, I enjoyed myself and from there, from playing most games, I just sort of got scouted from uh, the academy coach and from like Chin, Gale and stuff. And yeah, they just gave me an opportunity here, so I'm just trying to prove myself here. Absolutely uh, love this, the fact that there are definitely roots in for, for sort of all three. So you're you're a second row with the potential to play six? Yeah, second and row slash six, yeah. Are you a flat out number eight or are you more versatile than that? Um, I'm a, an eight, seven, more transitioning towards seven now. Okay. We can, it's, mate, you're a big seven. Crikey. What are they feeding these young lads here at Harlequins? And we're going to see you in the front row, but exactly where? Oh, right. Tatehead. Okay. Tatehead is my preferred side. Okay, so yeah. does that mean we're only going to get one side shaved? Yeah, in pretty much. <laughs> um, so you lads, you're just not playing rugby at the moment, and I imagine that's quite frustrating for you. So what does a, what does a day look like? What does a, a week look like? What are you doing to make sure that when rugby does return for you guys, you're in the best shape to do it? Well, a lot of it is in the hands of our S&C staff, and uh, they're doing uh, really, really hard work with us. and. It's genuinely paying off because a lot of us, or we came in a lot lighter than we are now, and a lot, and not nowhere near as strong as we are now. And um, we can see it, and we're just progressing in our conditioning standards and uh, in our speed standards as well. Um, and it's just slowly getting towards trying to get to that match fitness. So if the day comes where there is an injury, or we have a chance or an opportunity to go onto the pitch, and we have to play 
60 minutes, then we're able to do that and feel comfortable on the pitch. And for you, Matas, you've already played senior rugby, you played a good standard of rugby. How difficult has it been for you to have that kind of taken away? And if the, the championship does come back, would you maybe be interested in going back there to play some rugby before you get the chance to break into the first team here? Yeah, it would be, lo it would be nice to uh, get the uh, game time like senior to play in champion again because I played that last year. It was tough for me because I was only 19. So it would be nice to get a bit of uh, contact going through me and stuff. But yeah, like this year, it's just been fo I've been focusing more on uh, just improving my body, just becoming more, just a bit stronger, just becoming more uh, athlete than I was last year. So yeah, but yeah. And finally, Matt, you're well. You seem to me like you're you're a big character and you're somebody who always focuses on the positivity in a situation. <laughs> How are you staying positive when you can't get out there and beat people up on a Saturday just, afternoon? Um, just try to bring. Like loads of positivity, positivity to training. Like try to keep everything happy, keep everyone keep smiling. You know, um, if, you, if you, you can't play, so what, it's all about what we can contribute to training and help the guys who are playing at the weekend play the best. And you know, if you, if you can bring that, uh, don't expect anybody to bring the energy. You bring it, and then um, prepare these guys. And at the same time, when you're helping them, they're helping me. You know, for when that opportunity does come. And so, yeah, just smile it, and just like bring up, bring up, bring up the energy. Just smile. That's all you need just to do. Just smile, mate. Just smile, mate. Smile and wait, boys. Will Matas, thank you very much for your time, boys. Really thank looking you. forward to seeing how your careers progress here at the Stoop. Keep your eye on these lads. We've talked about it all the time. The future of this club is very, very bright. It's not just these three it's a whole host of young talent we can see Lewis on the wing again today we had Lennox coming through we've got Finn he's far too young to be playing first team <laughs> rugby but anyway good luck boys and uh, thanks very much for your time cheers, cheers thank you Concentrate on the present though as Harlequins make six changes to the side that hosted Bristol Bears in round four on Boxing Day. Joe Marler returns to form an all test capped front row with Scott Baldwin and Vilko Lov. It's a welcome return for Matt Simmons as well who's recovered from the knee injury he picked up against Exeter in round one. He's alongside Glenn Young in the second row. Tom Lorde is given the other blindside flanker. He forms a back row with the ever present Will Evans and Alex Dombrun who continues to skipper the side in the absence of Steph Levis. In the back line, Scotland's Scott Steele gets his first start of the season against his former employers. Marcus Smith is outside and hoping to add to the 60 points he's already got this season in Premiership Rugby. James Lang switches from outside to inside centre with Marchant filling the 13 jersey. Al wide, Lewis Liner keeps his place on the right wing. Hayden Burley's on the left, having shaken off the in injury he sustained when he lost the fight with a corner flag. And at fullback, Mike Brown wears the corner for the 339th time. The players are already out, so we'll quickly go through the London Irish team. Congratulations to prop forward Ollie Hoskins, who makes his 100th appearance for the club, having made his debut back in 2016. But Harry Alvington in the front row with him alongside Matu, then Mafi and Mahu. Rogerson captains the side with Cowan and Tuisui, me and Jackson, Brophy Clues, Rona Stokes, Hassel Collins and Parton. But with the players out in the middle already, Harlequins to kick off. It gives me great pleasure to welcome to the show for the first time Luke Northmore. Now it's bad news Luke because you're not out on the pitch but it is great to have you here. Finally, feels like we've spoken to everyone before you. We've got um, Marchie out there keeping your 13 jersey warm, but how are you? Yeah, I'm all good, thanks. I'm slowly on the mend. It's a pleasure to be on the show. I think they delayed it just in case this went really well. <laughs> they stopped me being out there. Uh, they say you say all the right things. Yeah. Um, so give us a quick update on the injury then, because you made such a great start to the season. Really nice to see you get a run of games at 13, a slippy. Oh, go short. Go on, lads. That's Let's interesting. Get some hands on that. Start. How yeah. we tapped it back? Come on, boys. Oh, we're into this. Lewis line it. Hits the line so hard. Really good to see him get a second start. There's Chugger. No one will tell me why Chugger's <laughs> called Chugger. But that's because you're not allowed to know, I don't think. Oh, unlucky, I'm lucky. That's all right. That's all right. Okay, that was knocked on. Right then, let's, uh, while we're waiting for this scrum to set, yeah, give me happened? an update um, on the injury. So, unfortunately, against Gloucester, I took a little bit of a head knock. And, um... Went off, had a HIA, passed everything, was fine. Um, was cleared fit to train for the rest of the week, trained perfectly fine. 
um, and then in the warm up against um, Munster in one of the warm up drills went to uh, make a tackle and got knocked out again um, I think as a result of the first the first head knock that was deemed as a concussion and then unfortunately I've been suffering um, with a fair few symptoms since um, fortunately to say they're on the mend and it's just um, just a few eye issues that I have at the moment that's um, that's keeping me out but hopefully it won't be too much longer well, look after yourself, mate. It's uh, very important you do. We're hoping to see you out in the quarters for a long, long time. So if you need to miss a few more games, yes. great stuff. Uh, what it seems we... like it's been a lifetime at the moment. Yeah, because what did you start? Was it three or four games in a row? Uh, I started three. Um... Yeah, it was you and Andre to begin with. Yeah. So here's a question for you then. So we've got Langy and Marchi in the centres today. As we kick to the corner, I tell you what, there were points on offer there. This is a statement of intent. Yeah, um, I think that's a really good message for the boys, starting really well, getting the ball back, and then having the confidence to just back ourselves, And uh, especially this early on in the game. We saw against Bristol we put points early on, early on, but it didn't not too much come of it, whereas this, we seem to be... Shouldn't be on top of them, and we want to just keep on top of them now. Oh, Domers has gone down. Oh, he's back up again. He's all right. I think he's took out a bit early. So we're going to reset the lineup. Right, I've got a question for you. Then I got some quizzes today, actually. Oh, nice. And I'll give you a minute to think about it because hopefully we're going to score a try here. So we've got Lange and Marchi in the midfield today, as that's overthrown. Oh. That's frustrating. Um, how many centre partnerships have Quinns used this season? This season? Yeah. Have a bit of a think about it. As, uh, Is this including people that come on the bench? No, starting. Starting. Oh, see, okay. see you've, already, you've already called out my research. It's yeah. absolute nonsense. <laughs> okay, so you go myself and Andre. Yep. That was for two, three weeks. And then... It, technically, Taps and I never actually made it onto the pitch, so it would be me and Andre... James and Taps and now so it should just be in terms of starting it should just be three well I, do you know what I did I did have so I've got Lang and Marchant Northmore and Esterhausen Taps and yourself although you said that never uh, came out yeah, then okay, yeah. Taps and Marchy and then uh, and then Taps and, and Lange had a game as well so <coughs> plenty of options in the middle oh who did Taps and March play start with? Uh, they started last week, didn't they? Yeah, Joe has been... This is Joe's first week back. He um, has been off for a while. Give it, give it, give it. Go, go Thomas. on, Thomas. Yes. Go on, Thomas. What a tackle. Oh, my God, that was some hit. What a shot. Was that the scrum half? Yes. Yeah. Was that uh, Ben Mir? I think he's going to give him a little bit of a talking to as well. Oh, no, it wasn't. It was part of it, the full back. No, no, I think it was the scrum half. He said, don't come at me again, I think. Fair play to the little lad. good shot. Yeah, you well, can't be angry at that. Two line outs now. Good. Tell you what, good territory early on, though. Yeah, the pressure's really on now. We, so we've got a lot of intent. Of the show, I like to concentrate on positivity, OK? Because yep. in terms of results, it's not been the best. But the way I look at it, we've played Exeter, we've played Racing, we've played Bristol. As much as it'd be nice to think that we can beat all of these teams as we've gone quickly great tempo early yeah, on this is nice. nice as much as it's great to think you know we can beat all of these teams you're not going to go a full game undefeated a full season undefeated as Domus does well to stay in there that is three very very tough games out of the way yeah but yeah they are difficult games and I think that we were really disappointed with the way that they all panned out um mm -hmm. But I think the main thing is that, as you say, you can't be perfect every week and it's all about um, how you react the next week. Um, yeah. And there's always positives and there's always negatives to take out of each game. And I think the more you focus on... Go on, pull the trigger there. Go, Kate. OK, have a go. Have a dig. He's a deceptively big lad, Caden. Caden is, yeah. yeah. He's very dense, Caden. Because he's, he's quite a bit shorter than me, but he told me the other week that he's 100 kilos. Yeah, he is. He Where is. does he hide that? He's ridiculously strong, and he's really thick. That's the, the common phrase. Is. <laughs> With two Cs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like that. What are you weighing in at at the moment? I'm also about 100 kilos. Okay. Um, 
probably not a good way at the moment after the head knock and the Christmas break. But it's Christmas, you're allowed. Yeah. Another penalty, right? Quick post saw corner. Uh, I think we're probably going to take the post now. He slowed that down like that. I like to play that game. Post yeah. Corner. Do you know what? It's changed in the game recently, though, isn't it? Because there was a time where. If we'd have got that penalty, or if any team had got the penalty when we got the first one on the 10 metre line, you go for the post, you take the points, you reset, but we're seeing more and more teams go for the corner now, really back themselves, try and get those five and seven pointers. Yeah, I think it's pro there's a lot of it that lies down to, with your momentum that you've got, you want to just keep, keep the momentum going. So if you can look at taking maybe five or seven points as you say mm -hmm. um, and even if you don't you know we've kept them in there half for a good I don't know how long about five minutes yeah. now six minutes rather than an easy three points and being pinned down here if we don't exit properly um, but you can see that we're obviously having a big intent to play and then when the time's right like now and it's the ball slowed down they have a chance to reset we'll take the three and uh, we know they would have done a little bit more work made themselves a little bit more tired in their halves so. mm -hmm. Should this be successful, which it is. Doesn't miss from there, does he, that lad? 63 points for the season already. I think he's going to go 200 this year. He was 198 last year. Oh, okay. he, didn't miss, he didn't miss many games last year, did he, I don't think, overall? No. So as a big part of today's show, we've had people sending in photographs. Oh, good man, Simon. We've taken that from the restart. We've had people sending in photographs of their experiences of Harlequins, what the club means to them. We've had some uh, absolutely great entrants, and we'll be hearing again from Steve, the club photographer, at halftime. Really interesting guy, Luke. I don't know how well you've, uh, you've got to know him, but we're going through eight of his favourite pictures. Wow. Um, have you had any... Uh, any, any particularly memorable pictures from your rugby career? Uh, yeah, there's a couple. There's obviously your debuts and stuff, and um, there's a couple. There's always a couple of funny ones. Nice one. Okay. Um, I think I sent one in to the, the media team yesterday. Oh, did you? Yeah. Um, a spoiler alert: we might have it. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. Yeah. Go on. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. You look. Uh, I mean, in in the modern day of Me Too, Luke, you look a little bit gropey there, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. Luckily, that's there's, there is no excuse for that. I suppose we're just celebrating a try. <laughs> um, yeah, that is my Premiership debut um, at Bristol. I was on the wing. First time I've ever played on the wing in my life. <laughs> um, time to do it. Yeah. And very fitting that I put it, I sent it in because it's Aaron Morris's birthday today. He's 26 years old today. So get your happy birthday messages yeah, to do. Aaron. Um, and happy um, this is also his first game back from a pretty serious Achilles injury. So we're happy to see him back on the bench and hopefully he'll get a good, good amount of game time. Yeah, he struggles with... with not long-term injuries, but injuries that, that keep him out for a frustrating amount yeah. of time because he feels like the kind of player that if he had a, a run, he could really do something. Yeah, it is. And as you saw last year when, you know, unfortunately Brownie had a, a knee injury that kept him out for, for quite a long time, you know, pre-COVID. Mm. And, um, you know, you saw Aaron really step up and take the reins and someone coming into the first team... Um, you know, sort of post Christmas, and he had come back from a little injury and found some form. It was really inspiring to look up to, and he's actually a really probably a lot you don't see from Aaron is how much he talks and how much of a leader he is on the pitch, and how well he he communicates and keeps the boys calm. Mm. Um, so yes, he unfortunately does pick up a couple of injuries, but it is great to see him back in uh, in the quarters again. Very naturally gifted athlete as well. Yeah, he? lovely runner, very strong, very athletic. Right, we're in a spot of bother here because we've given away a penalty in the middle of the park. First bit of defending to do. Quinn's three, Irish nil. Ten minutes in. This is their first chance. Not that line This is, you know, where we've been putting most of the work and stopping these more tries. You can imagine a lot of people with uh, opinions about. Yeah, and that time. looks to be pretty good. Nice, Marcus. Yeah, Marcus is kind of dirty there. As a... 
as a sensor, yeah. how frustrating is it for you in those situations, knowing that there's absolutely nothing you can do? You've just got to <laughs> yeah. be on standby if you're called upon. Yeah, it's difficult actually because there's the kind of a situation of what there's nothing you can say nor do. Mm. You can't become frustrated because the response quickly becomes, well, you get in there and do it then, <laughs> which is certainly something I don't actually want to do. Good quick ball here for um, Irish. Yeah, we thought, oh, that's a tough one. Um, that's not what we needed this early on. Um, <laughs> fair play to the lads there who scored the try and then just put their hands up straight away to say we're not celebrating this. That is, uh, that is a weird one. Although, like we had, uh, like we said in the conversation earlier, whatever PRL needs to do to make sure that we can still yeah. continue to play, they have to do. Um, for sure, for sure. Uh, hate conceding tries. But yeah, that was difficult. That was uh, probably um, a reaction of maybe you know a really good mall defence, and then from there we kind of switch off. Mm -hmm. Where malls have probably been something that we've been so focused on. Um, stopping we didn't really bring much intent off around the corner which I know that the boys will probably have switched on to now and realised and I'm sure that won't happen again well let's fingers crossed doesn't happen again here he is ah, Chippy's joining us another Uick boy just in time to remind you, uh, there is an exclusive for Harlequins members. Get in that code that's uh, flashing up across your screen now. Queen's oh, Irish 25, and that is uh, exclusive points for your membership portal. Chippy's brought snacks. Oh, okay. <laughs> the conversion's good. Paddy Jackson opens his ledger for the day. Oh no, I'm fine, thank you, mate. You, mate, hydration is key, and you're here for a full match today, so you look after yourself. We've got a bit of time at half time, though. You'll be able to go to the loo, right? Your microphone's on. Do you know I was going to gift wrap that for you after you telling me last time that your missus did the. Um, what did she do for you? Is it kitchen scissors? Kitchen scissors and uh, yogurt. Yeah. Two things you definitely need. <laughs> <laughs> How are the scissors, mate? Still sharp? No, going well, yeah, going really good, yeah. Did a bit of beer driven on the dog with it this week. Beautiful. So, making use of it. Week one, getting use out of it already, so, yeah. In a really good place, comes in. Uh, speaking of being useful, I've seen you out there doing some training today. Oh, How yeah. was it? Oh, great. I was bringing the buzz to the um, the, the warm-up. Um, Travelling reserve jobs just to bring the energy and yeah. uh, get hit. Anyone wants to do extra hit, so getting hit by easy, which was... <laughs> Probably low on my list of things I wanted to do today. No, um, that's not on anybody's to-do list. Oh is no, it? he's a big boy, and he's right on it today. So if he gets on, I expect some big collisions. Good. With some line out stuff, you know, I was right in the mix. It was, it was good to be uh, out there. You've also come out in an unzipped hoodie. No, yeah, I'm boiling. <laughs> oh, you? Fitness after the warm up. Um, a hot shower. I've okay. got I've got a jumper, right, and a hat behind me, so I'm Ooh. ready. I, I brought extra layers for the lads. Oh, you're a good lad. People have been coming really badly. Just Simo the other week wore shorts. The yeah. mania. Oh, that's unlucky, John. That's unlucky. Um, how much of the game have you seen, Chip? I literally just came out as they scored. So no, right. I don't know how they back um, in. Mate. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't know if it's bad. Um, bad for me. It's bad the bad first bad. first time they touched the ball. To be fair. Oh, that big props, a big, that big hooker's a big lad, isn't he? What's his name? More two. two. Yeah. He's yes. Speaking of big lads, we've got Bomb up there, making friends as always. Yeah. Can you guys hear him shout on the mic? He's so loud. Yeah, it is loud. He yeah. is here. Can we right. turn our headphones down? I'll try. Has that helped at all? I, I hadn't screamed yet. I'm sure he will in a second. Go on, someone punch a hole. What a langy. So now you're... Your knobs are the same as mine. Let's see if that helps. I've just given you some refs mic as well. Can you hear the refs mic there? No, actually you can't. Come on. Oh, okay. Go on, Joe. Go, go on. Go on. Joe. Cheek. That's Lovely. great. Give it. Oh, no. That's unlucky. That's unlucky. Let's go carry it out. So to build some pressure. You're looking to build some pressure. Yeah, just now we've got to really in. tighten things up. Don't slow it down. Oh. Ooh, shot. That's a good shot. Who was that, we don't need a lot of, we need a bit more directness when we're coming here. Good, well done, Joe. Go on, Chugger. And that's it, Katie Murley in the corner, is it? Oh, well, great deed. Oh, out, sorry. Speaking of great photos, Luke, I've got a great one of you um, absolutely burgling Cardiff University in the derby where you went <laughs> over in the corner, yeah. spilled it about three yards yeah. before the line, still claimed the try. Yeah. 
and there's a great photo of it. Is there actually? Yeah. <laughs> That's the Cardiff Derby for you, though. You've got you to take what you can get. That is, do you know what? Two try savers mm. from Irish, one either side. They're defending well, fair play. Yeah, I'm worried about you being cold chip. I'm, I'm in two I'm coats concerned here. About you. Yeah, I've got a lot of layers on today. Yeah, I've got two, two, two puffer jackets on. I've got my leggings on. Right, break in play here. So we've been asking people to send in their pictures. So we're going to have a look at the first few. They've been coming in in their droves. We're giving away... Oh, so, there's a lot on that. So yeah, we've got a montage here. I tell you what. All the big fellas, big sink. Yeah, absolutely. Good brownie. Lange. Even even smiling. They actually look related in a brownie, <laughs> don't they? We have Langy there as well. That picture okay, of Snap who's next? Quite recent. Lovely, lovely out in there. Yeah, that's nice. Just waving the flag. That's nice, good, isn't it? I got I'd like to put some, oh, and that's oh, that looks like, what's <laughs> Team Santa. Superb. Do you think if you wear something with Santa branded, he'll bring you, uh, he'll bring you more presents? <laughs> now, I haven't got the accompanying stories for these, but if you're looking at these pictures and you're thinking, this is absolutely brilliant, if you head over to um, the Quinn's Facebook page, the accompanying pictures and the names of everyone, some of the stories, absolutely fantastic. I can't wait till we can get some supporters back and people can make some more memories. But keep your eye on these pictures, boys, because we are going to be picking the best one and yep. we're going to be giving we'll a prize out a little bit one. later on. Um, right then, could do with turning this line out over here. If we can just pin them in this corner for a while, make yeah. them kick, have a poor exit. Like so, poor chase, chance for Lewis to have a go here. Yeah. Good. Come on then, Brownie. Come on then, Kate, let's see what you got, mate. And that's not where you want to go in between two, is it? Your hands are all over the floor. Yeah, just drop them off. Good well done, feet. Marcus. I just want someone on the shoulder there. Done well to get Black Owen out of there, though. He's uh, their main threat over the ball. There we go, then. This is where we have to sort of figure something out. We're a bit aimless at the moment. We can kick like that. Get a bounce. Brilliant kick. Really good oh, really kick. Nice, really. Nice. really nice. So you lads had the week off between Christmas and New Year, right? No, after that, an, an unexpected week off. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, the playing squad did. Yeah, the injured okay. lads, not so much. No, we, we still trained a bit. We um, we trained until the Wednesday. So after they knew the game was called off, yeah, we had um, like a brutal weight session in the morning, and then into fitness just in uh, just after that. So it wasn't feet up. Then. No, it was like an hour's smash. Come on, then, Kate, that's that's have a go. Have a go. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. We managed to do So you there. you really want Caden to cut loose, don't you, Luke? Every time yeah. he's on the ball, you want to see him do. I just think that sometimes he's such an elusive runner, and when you give him the chance to just go, when you give him the chance to open up, mm. he's unbelievably quick, really athletic. And um, it looks like he's actually a bit hurt here, which isn't good for us. I think it's his hand, you know. We're seeing birthday boy Aaron hand. Morris warm up here, which would be good. Freshly shaved goatee, because he knows <laughs> I like the goatee. <laughs> it's all I can grow. Go, so go. Uh, go on then. Here we go. go. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Is that that's all right. Let's go, let's go. Yeah, One more, come on. Yes. Come on, Smithy. In you go. Has he scored that? I think he's got Yeah, yeah lovely score. Oh. Oof, there's a bit of a heart in my problem for a second when <laughs> yeah, he slid in. After being in there the last couple of times. Yeah, he's sliding on his back. And I think the guy turned him as he was sliding, but yeah, it's good. Good work eventually. I thought maybe Lange could have given that a first time. Yeah, but he did. I think uh, he was trying to. Yeah, he got. He got it's a good read. Who, who put in there? Oh, Stokes, it, James Stokes. Yeah, to, that's nice yeah. from Lange. No, he did really well. That's intelligence that for a professional rugby player. Very savvy. Nice. He could be off for that, you know. Uh, I think Langy is falling slightly, so he might get lucky. Yeah, if it's contact to the head, yeah. it's contact to the head. I know that won't have been malicious. Yeah. He's, a, he's a good lad, that James Stokes. Does that matter now? What, if he's yeah, a good lad? Good no, lads. no, no, he's a good, good lad. Lads, no, if, it, if it's malicious. I don't think anyone's deliberately trying no, to take I mean, his head off these days. Like, if it's with intent, you know what I mean? Like, if he's, yeah. if he's stood up and yeah. Langy stood up, I think that's a... Yeah, there was this talk about mitigating circumstances. So, like, yeah, I think as, as um, 
Luke he said Lange was falling there so maybe he'll get her. God it's freezing isn't it? It is cold. I'm still I'm still cooking back here. Great strike. That's a lovely match. 70 points. He's definitely getting 200 this year. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, very good. That was right. what we needed, that. Just really put the pressure back on them. Joe Markson looking towards the camera, hoping it gets pans on him. <laughs> of course it will. Yeah. To be fair, Aaron was looking for some uh, Aaron was looking for some cameras just now, just doing some press ups. Get blue some blood steel, in the gun. Blue steel and stuff, was it? Yeah. Couple more pictures then off. Somebody in sunglasses there. Do you remember them? Yeah. Goodness the days me. of the sun. That was a really good game. And that, I don't think that Ulster game was last season, was it? I, can't remember. I think the Ulster game was in the evening last season. Oh, <sighs> Has he done Lewis for blocking him on the way back? I'm not quite sure. I didn't see it. I was looking I at his was, pictures. Yeah, I think it was on the kick chase that Lewis was looking back. But The RAC, very valuable company there. Good hat. <laughs> Uh, other um. other roadside <laughs> services are available. <laughs> to be fair, I needed one the other day. Talking about bum Christmas presents, mm. I bought myself a car battery, so you know, oh, no, didn't wrap really it though. Nice. Oh, I've just had to look at that one there at yeah. Big Stoop over the road. Wow, oh. those are the good days. Those. Hey, these are the good days. We're going to yeah. defend this now. Go on. Yes, yes, chugger. Ooh, chugger. Oh, chugger. It's all right. Me. Oh no. He span out of that before he's even got tackled. That's, yeah. That was an interesting technique. Come on, let's get Come off on, the line. Good work with that from Thomas with two tackles in a row there. So we don't get, gonna get off the line. Come on, Webby. Come on, Webby. Lovely. Yes. yes. Oh, no, go, 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 go. Great pass. Yeah, one, more, on again. one more. Go, Kate. Now, this is where Caden Murley really shows. Oh, this lad's covering him well. Yeah. Yeah, go, Marcus. Good chase. Good chase. Okay, okay. Interesting <laughs> technique, that's nice. Fair dues to clear power, oh, he's taken that. Come on, Webby. He's covered about 50 metres to catch yeah. that pass he has. That's the Good one, Shimo. Oh. I mean, I mean this, gonna find they're gonna kick I mean back this back. in the most complimentary way possible, and it is a compliment. Simo's a big lump, isn't he? Oh, he's a yeah, big Yeah, he is so valuable to his team. Yeah. Um, He's a big old unit. Yeah, he's a really big lad, incredibly fit. He will let you know how hard he works, but he does work <laughs> exceptionally hard. Yeah, good to have him back. He brought some intellect as well back to the... Um, back to make extra, extra head and extra pair of eyes to the line-up. The, yeah. Really shouting, isn't he? So that's the thing about the empty stand. You can... uh, is, there like a, is there a mic or something up there that catches them shouting? No, they just. Oh, no. oh my goodness me! What is? Oh my god! Well done, Steely. Well done, Steely. Can't make it, make it! Oh my god! Oh, unbelievable! How have we go got Lewis? away with that? Let's play it. Let's go, go on, Lewis. Lewis. Yeah. No. This oh, is down here now. Let's go, let's go, let's go, Caden. Let's go. Go on, go on, Caden. Go on, Caden. If we can get men up there now, we're oh. flying. Curtis Rohner is a big guy, if I'm honest. Oh, yeah. oh really I need is. to make that tackle. Big Really need to make that tackle. Curtis Rowan looks absolutely gap. That's forward. That's forward. Yeah, low Marcus. Marcus. Just low Marcus. Great Lovely tackle. tackle. Can't play it. He can't play that on the floor, sir. Oh, goodness me, Chippy. Oh, come on. Me. Are we not even looking at things today? Come on, <laughs> just one big collision. There we go, Lord A. Good man. Good man. There oh. we go, Logan. Keep going. Yes, Marcus. We've got two teams here who haven't played in a couple of weeks. And everyone is just going absolutely wild. That's Marcus Smith's extra guns, that was. I saw him on the day off <laughs> in the gym working on his arms with Jack oh, Stafford, no. so that's great to see. What are you? Well done, Joe. He's a strong lad, this little man. Yeah. That's, his hands were on the floor. Come on. Get low, Simo. Hope he doesn't work much. No. No. That's frustrating. What a passage of play for the uh, for the neutral. It's going to be some tired boys out there. Yeah, I'm not really sure where we stand with that and no. how all that happened. He, um, the big eight when he came down here. Yeah. So he's he's placed it so he can't pick it up and pop it up off the deck. So. No. I don't know why. And a tackle's been completed there as well. 
quite frustrating. Webbs is down. Yeah. Webby doesn't go down very often. No. And that looks quite concerning. Hang on. Oh, he's lost it. I did think he rolled quite a bit, but I'm not quite sure. We've got the benefit of the replay here. Hopefully, if you're watching on a second screen, you've got it as well. But we're holding the conversion because we need to see it from the other angle. He's lost it. Oh, has he? Am I just looking at it through my coin Because he's spectacles? changed arms, I don't really I know it. where we stand with that. The other arm was in front. Sweet. I've got a protein bar in here somewhere. Oh, you're just going to be professional, are you? Throat. Yeah, oh, fair enough. Right? No, no, I'm fine, thank you, mate. Do you want it? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Underrated Saurines. Oh, it's good gear. Is he in control of that? I think they'll give that. I just don't... <clears throat> his left arm was in front of... It's all happened... We've all been there. We've done similar <laughs> things that we were in, talking about earlier. In big local derbies. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Luckily the TMO never existed at University Rugby. Oh, I don't know that, you know. Yes. No try, there we go. Luck's gone on our side. But going back to no, we're going back to the penalty, I think. Have you not got the ref's mic? No, I'm not on the ref's mic, actually. No, you're not. But, and, and you're saying it's something is very loud in your ears? <laughs> yeah, when, specifically when Paul Gustard screams, that's very loud. <laughs> is, or Charlie Mulcrone. <laughs> is the word he's screaming offside by any chance? <laughs> There's numerous ones that he screams. Okay. It is, yeah, when he's shut, it is loud. Yeah. Okay, well, we've got away with one. Let's see if we can get away with another. Come on in, come on in. Straight hit, straight hit. Oh, no. Kill. Yes, Good Steely. Shot. Brilliant, yeah, yes, it on. Lovely stuff. Brilliant from the lads. Good D, that. Will Evans has come back from the dead. <laughs> and he's here, fighting fit. <laughs> Look at that, yeah, look at Wilco right. putting it in there. Come on, boy. Blair Cowan had every right to absolutely smash it then, and he didn't. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh he's, he's done really done well, well there. there. He's done really well there. I always got back over the line. Um, Steve Matthews is a big nuisance. Oh, they're lucky could hit us here. Oh. Think of that. We haven't had one yet, and it's just as well, because then it would be on record forever that I can't catch, so... Yeah, today would be the day, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would come. Um, Irish look bang up for this today, you know? Yeah. I think we... The London derby is something that I suppose if you're not um, a regular from around here, you don't... And obviously the buzz is normally a lot different when the crowd's here. I remember yeah. when they were here for the Pride game back probably this time maybe a year ago or so yeah and that was some event and they really did show up and I think they beat us in the yeah, end yeah they did um, you know so we're you know it's a massive game every time the two London clubs well it used to be the three London clubs come up against each other oh, right then just just five quiet minutes would be nice wouldn't they Let's go now. I think we can get, if we get this drive going, it might be a penalty because that guy's on the floor. Right? Oh, it's, 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 it's really That's lovely, that. That's really I like nice. this, though. Good work. I'm not sure what Big Albert's coming from there. I'll change some of these laggies after it. Come on, Lane. Thank you. Lovely yes, Lane. Great time. Brilliant. Scott Steele's ability to kick off both feet really, really helps us in these positions. <laughs> the way he's played since coming to Quinns, you could do wonder why Irish were happy to let him go. I mean, obviously circumstances change and people fit into different systems and whatever. Yeah. He's been, we say it every week, he's been absolutely brilliant since he's coming. Yeah, I think the, with Irish, they obviously have this... Um, Nick Phipps, yeah. you know, the Australian international, and um, go on, Thomas. 
and maybe they, they, they didn't see that Steely they probably didn't value Steely as much as we do now he's arrived yeah. and he's been let loose and I think you can see by the hard work now he's put in with being well, awarded with Scotland caps and being able to represent his country just how good a player he actually is and when it comes to skill set and things oh, like that very that's well done within that within that yeah good Lord A well done Lord A one thing all they will do is clear a breakdown really nicely. It's unfortunate they just didn't go to one. I think. Yeah. All right, Brownie, sit in the backfield now, Brownie. He's back left. Is that what about? Okay, someone needs to drop. Someone needs to drop. They're going to play from here. Okay, you got it, Joe. Well done, Lewis. Well done, Lewis. He's got a lovely goose in the Marcus. Yeah. Yes. yes. Ooh. Ooh. See, he just keeps riding these tackles, Caden. Two man hits. Keeps riding the tackle. So we just need to exit now. Rock over nicely. Don't need Steelo, Steely uh, clearing that breakdown either. Uh, just stick it up, Marcus, and get after it, Joe. Come on. Go on, Lewis. Go on, Lewis. Lovely. That'll do. Is Caden okay? Yeah. Caden's it's got left back. Left hand, is it? Yeah. Borders, don't bite. Oh, don't. Yeah, speaking of that Marcus Goose, I was talking to you about the photos earlier, wasn't I, Luke? We've got yeah. a brilliant photo. Spoil spoiler alert. <laughs> but one of the photos is him sort of mid-goose and mid-air. Defending that. I mean, obviously you lads have played against lads with footwork. When you've got no idea which way he's going to go, it's an absolute nightmare, I'd imagine. Yeah, yeah he is actually a really tough lad to defend against because not only is he quick, his feet are good and he has an ability to hold his own in the contact situation even though he doesn't look like he should be able to yeah. um, and I think the thing you don't really know like the thing you don't focus so much about is his feet because his hands are so good mm -hmm. but his ability to jump into the space and then put somebody else in extra amount of space is something that is really difficult to defend did he knock that on? is that just a bad pass? I think it's just, just the pass went past over around it yeah. oh. So we've got James Stokes down for Irish. He's at his ankle. We've got Caden. In. I think everyone's getting treatment. It looks like the backs are getting. Looks like Louis Lyons getting his nails done over there. <laughs> <laughs> this is the picture that we were talking about, by the yeah, way. Yeah, that's lovely. And that's looking lovely. at that there, I've got. As soon as he lands, I've got no idea what direction he's going in. Yeah. You've got to hope you're close enough that like, whichever way he goes, you're going to hit him. Yeah, yeah. You can hit him as soon as he's there. Right, I'm going to have to excuse myself to get my layers on now. So. Do, mate, do. Pop your microphone down. You have been playing the big dog for a while, weren't you? Trying to be tough. I cooled down now. When uh, we come back down well to the camera shot out of this, it's, yeah. it's actually Chippy's just taking his top off. Yeah. He's going... I'm Chippy and I don't get cold. No, no, not, not true. Not true. From North, mate. <laughs> yeah, that, that classic saying, you're tough. So we've seen the picture that you sent in, Luke. We've got a great one of Chippy as well, while he puts his top on. Um, it's just, what, what's happening there, mate? You look like you're being violated. Oh, good. I leave you get, uh, I leave you get dressed. Well, yeah, more and more layers, mate. I've got some, I've got some spare gloves. I bought gloves for all the lads today. What a cracking picture. Right, I'll put in at the scrum, in the middle of the park. I would say hopefully nothing's going to happen for the next 30 seconds or so. You just don't know in this game, do you? This is a really, this is a place in the back that you really want to attack. We're going to go after nine early, and then we really want to go from here. Go on then, Lewis. Oh, go on, Lewis. That's great. Right then, Chippy. Yeah. You, you layered up. What's going on in this one? Brilliant right. picture. It's on the full-time muscle in Cape Town uh, Sevens, 2006, 17, 17. Okay. Um, so we we beat Fiji in the semi, and then we we beat South Africa um, in the final, and that's the last shot of fans in the stadium because I've never seen fifty thousand people leave a place so quickly. <laughs> um, it was class. It was like a great moment. Um, it's nice. Yeah, uh, and that's just like, one of the lads. I think he was on the bench actually, running running the waters on. Mate, those boots are pretty spicy. Yeah, yeah. So they did. Uh, I did have the custom boot boots for the season. So for six stops, they did six like different boots. So that's supposed to be the, uh, some of their famous houses in Cape Town. I bet you were fast in those. Oh yeah, always. <laughs> I think there's a there's a picture somewhere of me doing an offload with one of the boots in my hand. <laughs> the boot came off mid-play. I picked it up, thinking the ball's gone out, and it's come back to me. 
Yeah, that was a good, good time, good memory. The tournament win. What's going on here? We oh. won the penalty from the scrum, played advantage, and now we've uh, kicked the training. What about this one, Chip? Oh, yeah, it's a good oh, one. Wow. That. <laughs> that was me. Yeah, that was um, Bermuda. I lost me two. Oh. I learned. Oh, go on. Go on, Paul. There's something by inside. Oh, now stay in. Stay in. Right, huh? That was pre and post Christmas, that was. Yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I learned that. Um, Tongue and elbows are harder than English heads. Oh god! Someone landed on me with a uh, an elbow. Mm. Yeah, not, not, a, a, not a, in the game. Langy? We scored. Go on, Langy. Yeah. It's not Langy. I've said. I want to come back to that. Yeah, yeah. Go on, Lord Day. Oh. Day's bread and butter. This sort of stuff. That's unfortunate. He's due a meat pie, is Lord Day as well, yeah, isn't yeah. he? Don't think this is for you, Brownie. Oh, he's actually managed to do so. Right. <laughs> When you've got Big Joe Marlow no, behind penalty, you, is it, or not? you think... He has! And he can't celebrate, can you? Goodness me! Wow. Has, has he looks just, angry, doesn't he? Has he just pinched one off the forwards? When That's... Joe Marlow stood over there, you kind of bet your chances that Joe should carry this. But... Is that Brownie on the latch as well? Doing the Lord's work? It must be cold in the backfield today. Getting in the mix, isn't he? Oh, fair play. He's done very well there. Um, did you have a gun shield in when the tooth came out? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I took the I took the uh, gum shield out with the tooth. Oh no. Yeah, it wasn't a great one. I got in touch with Oprah, but they never got back to me. I thought you said Oprah then, as if you wanted to tell your story <laughs> on American television. No, no, no. Oprah might be the one though. I have more chance of getting a reply, I think. <laughs> oh goodness me. Yeah, no, it wasn't wasn't great that. Hope for the tooth fairy. I know. Like that. I know. I've, I've looked better. <laughs> Boulders did so well to stay in it, yeah. or at least leave the ball, you know? That's that's twice he's ridden contact well today, when he yeah. got pushed back over the line as well. Big strong boy. Oh, very good. Right, back in the lead then. I'm oh, sorry, back in the lead, their second try was. Extending uh, the lead at the moment. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, so they're making a change. Who's coming on? Ben Donald's coming on for them, but I haven't seen who's coming off. Oh, Sean O'Brien's on the bench. Yeah, yeah, he is, yeah. I've not seen him play for a many, many a month. <laughs> many a month, a couple of years, eh? Yeah. He's got a metal hit now, hasn't he? Uh, he's not that old, is he? <laughs> <laughs> um, metal hit. If you had to have a body part made out of metal, what would you choose? Fist. Or jaw. <laughs> or jaw, probably. <laughs> metal jaw. Have no, that effigy and elbows. Mm, I think that would be, uh, the jaw would be one of the worst ones. It's heavy, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Constantly looks surprised. I don't think you make it out of, like, silver or anything, you know. It's not, like, it's not a luxury having a metal, hit, metal jaw. Get up, Langy. Get up, Langy. There was a WWE storyline years ago about a guy with a metal plate in his arm that used to knock people out with. Yeah, that's why a lot of a lot of lads. It's such a common bone to break that a lot of lads had to strap them, pad them down. Good shot, bombers. Just fill in, Joe. Fill in, Joe. Oh, Lovely shot. Marla. Oh. What's it? <laughs> Tommy's breaks then as well. Oh. Joe Marler, addition it in the middle of the park. Put that on a list of things you love to see. Joe Marler is an incredible defender. For a big lad, he get he get hits, gets to the floor and chops unbelievably. That is technically perfect, isn't mm. it? <laughs> Bit of afters as well. Great strike. Yeah. Here we go then, back That's into the 22. Hit. Let's make it stick, these boys. We've actually, we've responded really well to not conceding that second try, if that yeah. makes sense. Kind of, kind of the kick up the bum you needed. Yeah. I wonder if there's a chance of a coffee at half time. There is, cold, yeah. There it? is. Freezing. <laughs> Up in the coach's office, as is soon as they leave, we go, come in like vultures. Oh, that's <laughs> empty the cafeteria. Uh, I'll leave it up to you then. Yeah, no. Oh, oh. Nice. Right, line out. 15 metres out. Boulders. Good man. That's a good line out. Do you on. like that line out? Yeah. No, I we missed the first couple at the start, that was all. Oh, do we? Yes. Yeah. As far oh. as the expertise go about I just line thought you were just enjoying the line out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
It's not my favourite thing. There we go. Borders with the carry again. Oh. That's, 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 that's the problem when you break out of a mall like that. Yeah. It's hard to see where the ball is at the best of times in a mall. Never mind when you break out on but your is own. Is he pinging him for holding on? I don't know. I think he yeah. must have pinged him for holding yeah, on, yeah, yeah. but I don't know if he. It becomes a tackle out of him. Well, How's your line out stuff going, Chip? I'm enjoying it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Miss is helping me out. Got some more pictures, a big game. That's so a cracking Miss, picture. Miss is helping you out. It's helping you with the lift in, is she? Yeah, no, she talks to me, she talks me through the calls, you know, we, we go through it in the front room. Okay. She loves it. This is the rock and roll lifestyle we live. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Maffey still wrapping the glove after all these years. He's got a big um, cut. Oh no! He's got a big cut on his hand. Has he? Yeah. Yeah, that's why. It I've ne- never so known it, why. It, it never healed well. What, uh, in his palm or something? Yeah, on the palm of his hand, got yeah. a big cut. I'm um, not using utensils properly, is it? That's it. No, I didn't get any kitchen scissors. Yeah. <laughs> Just have the safety. It's dangerous ones. using knives these days. Yeah. No, but it never. It, yeah, it was horrible when it happened. You must have been out Magic. Leicester with him, yeah, 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 yeah. He's a, he's a good athlete. He's Some line out operator. Yeah, he's a nice guy. I don't know that. It's a loose one. Get up, man. You are getting up. It's good hands, though. It's difficult. Wow. Difficult there yeah, when he's holding on to that. They've got some wheels at the left hand side, Irish, haven't they? This uh, Hassel Collins is yeah. very, very fast, yeah. He scored that try last season where he stepped off his left foot about eight times and gradually made his way towards the posts. Mm. Stupidly good I've try. I've seen it's between him and Lewis Rees Zammett, I think they're up there with the quicker lads and the, the quickest lads in the Premiership. He's, he's a very, very, very exciting young talent, Rees Zammett, isn't he? Yeah. Get on that, Thomas. Good man. Brilliant. Oh, we'll take the penalty as well. Brilliant. No, I think it's that penalty. It is, yeah. Oh, he's just put his arm on the way, isn't he? Oh, no. Here we go. Yeah, penalty. 17-7. We could do with not conceding before half time here. Another back roll down. You might get to see old metal hit. <laughs> That's Rogerson <laughs> down. That's the captain. Yeah. Mm. Old metal hit, as he he's has, known. He does have a bad hip, I'm pretty sure. That's Colin, kept Colin him out. No, no, I like that. I, I don't, don't let Spice get in the way of a good story. I'm with you on that. <laughs> I've had, I've if had if we add some extra names. Spice to it, then we could <laughs> make it sound real. He got it made out of gold, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Add value to himself. Here he is, look, warming up. <laughs> Just goes into the physio room, gets double D40 every, every week. <laughs> uh, gets his uh, filter changed, his MOT done. Just an oil change. <laughs> Tell you what, Luke, they're shiny shoes, mate. Are they new for the show? Nah, they aren't new. Just, they, well, they are relatively new. Goodness Just look me. after them. This is a London boy now. That's yeah. it, he cleans them with a toothbrush. Yeah. <laughs> Fresh whack can't, go any, can't go anywhere to make them dirty, can I? So, mm. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Good point, well made. <sighs> so you're you saying you're having a few problems with the eyes then. How are they going about testing those? To um, So I recently saw what's called a vestibular specialist, oh, which is a lady who, look, who specialises like in that. eyes, etc. Um, and... Um, I'm just working closely with her f- with a few exercises to try and help my eyes work t- together again because okay. at the moment they're working individually when I have to stare at, um, stare at things they work I kind of look one eye sways away and the other one stays concentrated okay. um, so it's all pretty low key like basic stuff mm. but it's amazing until you have something wrong with your eyes you realise like you can see you spot the difference massively yeah Fingers crossed it won't be too long. And I suppose that's very difficult to put time scale on. Yeah, the yeah, that's the problem at the moment. It's unfortunately not like a knee or an ankle where you no. where you th- know it's going to be you know four weeks if things go well and stuff. It's all a it's all a bit unknown. But I'm hoping it's going to be three to uh, min- minimum of three weeks. But I don't. Unfortunately, I don't think it's likely. No. Oh. Really? That's that guy. Coming here for. Well, that's that guy on the bottom of the wall. 
Oh, that's yeah, got cross go field. Right, Brownie, get on this. Good man, that's Brownie. God, that's a good take. Brilliant take. take. That is a brilliant. Oh. Who's he called that on? Youngy. Oh, I can't call. I don't feel as though I can call uh, call anyone by their nicknames. If I don't, I don't know why you're called Chippy. Chippy. Well, <laughs> from, that's quite obvious. Yeah. Welsh yeah. people call uh, carpenters chippies. Oh, no, that's a common name oh, for yeah. a carpenter. Oh, is it? Yeah, oh. a chippy. Well, maybe because it happened in Wales, though. Yeah. I thought it's it might be because you were you were a bit aggressive and you had a short no. fuse. Oh. Well, that's just, that's he does just have a chip a, on that's, that's just an unfortunate coincidence. <laughs> Right. You have to with a name like Chippy, I suppose, haven't yeah. you? But then I've also been paired with a nickname Pillow Fists. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you want your fist built out of metal? Oh, That's a yes. good move. That's a good try. <sighs> That's not all we needed going into half time. No. It's had frustrating as the first more looked like it was their guy who brought it down, but because we were on the outside on top of them, obviously to the ref, he can't see it. No. How much of it do you think is by chance with malls and stuff because I don't really understand what happens uh, when it goes down it's um, when it goes down it's like quite obvious who brought it down like you can tell um, but with defending that one there it's kind of it's hard to say it's, it's like pushing if you were on the floor and you were pushing a metre ruler with with two fingers and you're trying to push it straight but on either end like it, if you're in the middle it sways and it tilts and that's where they like the the variance comes so you kind of swing around what as soon as more pressure comes on one side everyone starts pushing that side the other finger comes closer and then it swings around the outside and it's so hard to stop that momentum when it turns mm -hmm. it's it's really difficult and that's what happened then like we push on the ins or like push trying to push them towards the touchline and it's turned and their momentum has just swung around the outside and if they're taking a step that way then it's missed that has he yeah what a great strike. Man. That was some analogy about Rudy. Yeah, I really like that. It took me a while to get on board with that. Yeah. But I think I'm I with you. I think, yeah. Like a scale. Oh, very easy. There, you look easy like. Picture. So we're on the outside there. It's yeah. just turned. You see how many There's bodies we've got. side of the ruler, look. That's coming it. at us. Coming around. Right then. Something for half time, please. Not that. Good finger, worse people. Yeah. For, him, for tackling the big Simo. So. You don't want to let Gav run up there. They've done no. that quite a lot. Look you're, at not that. A, you're not allowed to do that, sir. That's not a tackle. That's, it literally hasn't touched him. And you can't just fall on the floor, ref. If not, we'd all do it's that. It's like a team run. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking a knee there. That's how I like to train. Yeah. They just want to see it out to half time, don't they? Yeah. <sighs> Which is a long time. The key is to not just to keep him here and hope for a. Has he got his arm out for him? No, that's it. No, that's time. it. Oh, we've got the wrong time here. I thought it was in a minute. And... Oh, right then, Harlequin 17, Irish 12 at half time. Gentlemen, your brief thoughts on what we've seen? Uh, I think that was a really good first half. Um, it took us a while to warm into the game, but once, in terms of our line out possession and stuff, but when we had our hands on the ball, we've been pretty, pretty lively, pretty, pretty physical. And I think it's just stopping. The problem is, is that it all does spur from like an error. It's always there's always an error that leads to something. They're in our half. They kick to our half from a penalty. They then maul us over. So it's difficult to be like we have to fix our maul because that's a given. But if we never give a penalty away, we will never have a maul. So yeah. I think we just need more of the same. Uh, probably tighten up our defence just slightly, get off the line a bit quicker, and then. We're looking for a pretty good second half, I think. It'll be pretty interesting to see how it goes. Yeah, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a frustrating end to that half. I thought like we were right right in it and right on it the whole half. The, the bits I saw, the 30 minutes I saw. Uh, and then to concede like a try at the end, I see. It's like the outcome is just what you saw the Mall D, but as Luke said, you're a bit indisciplined in the middle third, cost us a bit there. Uh, having to defend two malls, like can't win games if you keep getting pegged down into the corner. Um, but we're still right in it, 17-12 at half time, we're in a good spot, they come out firing. I think the first five, ten minutes of the second half is key. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully we get in there, lads have a good chat. 
talk about detail and then build the emotion through that half and get back out there. Nose is in front, we lead at half time, 17 points to 12. We're going to go on the quest for a coffee here, but a chance now for you to get involved. Uh, the DHL Moments That Deliver is something that regular viewers of the show know all about. We want you to pick the try though, the top try out of these four for our DHL Moment That Delivers. Then after that, it is time for part two of the Photography Chronicles with Steve, where we're going to go through eight of the best photos he's taken since he's been the official photographer here at Harlequin. So get Get stuck in, enjoy these tries, get voting, and we'll speak to you again for the second half. Chisholm, onwards through Tizard. Possession of the ball, so precious for Quinns. Uh, that's a lovely little dink, and Earl is after it. This might work out beautifully. Marcus Smith, magnificent little touch. Nathan Earl. His orange boots start to flash. He's well brought down. Care, Lorde, acts as conduit. There's a bit of space out here. Quinns know that. Northmore, Northmore through the gap. Luke Northmore, one person to beat. Men inside, flings it all the way to Danny Care, who will gobble those up. Evans tried to go, couldn't reset. Baldwin, all that. Temporarily interested Grayson, now he's out of position, and Quinns are behind them. They're going again, Nathan Earl inside, Danny Kerr, That's back fine. to Nathan Earl, Nathan Earl into the corner. More superb interplay. Esterhausen does incredibly well to hold on to that ball and step, and Marcus Smith is going to round the final defender. And actually, Marcus Smith is going to put a beautiful cherry on top of this Harlequin's cake. It is now time for part two of the Photography Chronicles. We've gone up, I would say, into the warm, but it's not particularly no. warm. I can't believe you've braved it without gloves, but can you take a good snap with gloves on? Uh, weirdly enough, you can, Okay. Uh, but most photographers don't really like them. There's Psychopaths. Some, yeah, there's something about it. I think it, I don't know, it, it affects performance, perhaps. I don't know. Pretty chilly here at the Stoop yes. today. Uh, what's the coldest place you've ever been taking pictures? Oh, well... Oh, in the, this country, Blackburn Rovers on a, I think it was a Wednesday <laughs> night in the mid 90s, you know, Champions League match. It was appallingly bad, yes. Blackburn is quite literally on the highway to hell, isn't it? It's the A666. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. But uh, yeah, it's uh, a picture's in a hollow for starters. So it was, yeah, I don't think the Greek players were particularly uh, enamoured with their night out. <laughs> oh, Blackburn would have probably rather than a away day that day anyway. Um, right, let's have a look at some of the fruits of your labour. It must have okay. been very difficult for you to pick uh, your favourite pictures because you've taken so many great ones yeah. here at Harlequins over the years. But before we have a look at the pictures, what what were you looking for when you selected these? Um, well, it's a variety of things. There's some behind-the-scenes ones which are, are quite amusing. Mm -hmm. uh, I've chosen a couple that are peak, what I call peak action pictures, and um, pictures that sum up the person that's in them, really, uh, and also the team they play for, I guess, as well. The art and the artist. All right, well, <laughs> let's get the first picture up, then. What's going on here? OK, so this is Danny Kerr scoring uh, a quite a ludicrous try against Worcester. Now, this has come, um, come off a Worcester scrum. So if you get the chance to have a look at the video that's on the Quinn's Facebook page, uh, our scrum shunted their scrum massively, and the ball came out of the back. Danny then chips it on and chases it down. And believe it or not, from there, he scored a try. So he's gathered it with one hand and got it down with that lot in pursuit. So uh, for me, I mean, that's what we call a full frame picture as well. So there's not a lot of room for error there. You can easily chop his feet off or his head. Um, and that has happened really fast. I mean, it's pretty rapidly happening that. So pretty pleased with that one. In terms of uh, capturing somebody like Danny in the full frame, is it easier because he's small? <laughs> well, I wouldn't, yeah, well, I don't think I should say that about him. <laughs> well, I think Danny's one of those players that, uh, there's certain players that do things that perhaps not even his own teammates are anticipating are going to happen. So I think he's one of those guys that you keep an eye on because he's known for that making a break thing. So he's, a, he's one of those people that, you know, often you get a picture out of. Well, while we get the next picture up, um, how important is it, if you're a club photographer, to actually know the players and, and maybe preempt what they're going to try and do? Uh, 
Well, well, I think I think what happens is you get sort of used to a playing style, perhaps. I mean, Harlequins traditionally are known for playing that sort of fast running rugby. So you're very aware when you're watching the match, you're, you're, you are looking at it through a camera. So you're seeing a very compressed view. So you're seeing like perhaps two or three players wide, if you like. But you're also out your other eye, keeping an eye on what's going on on the wings, where the fullback might be, because you, you never know. And I think the thing with sport is that you never quite know what might happen. You can sort of guess, but often it's very, very uh, quick. So the turnover of ball, for example, you know, all of a sudden you've gone from their 22 to our 22. So you've got to be, you've got to concentrate quite a lot on what's going on. In the words of Chris Whitty, next slide, please. <laughs> okay, so this uh, is quite a nice picture here. Uh, We've got Luke Wallace breaking through the Wasps defence. Now, as you can see, the, I think it's Wade's on the floor there. He's obviously tried to make a tackle. But I like this because, A, it's got some very nice light on it. And you've also got uh, the angle of his body. Uh, you can see he's really sort of broken that tackle. Uh, and he's got his socks are rolled down. There's a bit of blood there on his shin. Uh, he's got his hair going up in the air. And he's got a beard and all that sort of thing. So I, I just like it. I think it's a nice action picture. It's, uh, it really sort of captures that moment in that match. It's got everything that you need in a rugby picture there, hasn't it? It's got mud and blood and tape and bodies yeah. strewn. In terms of the, the, the skill level then, I mean, Luke is pin sharp there. Then you've got varying levels of blur behind, whether yeah. it's the supporting players, the crowd in the background, the posts, the depth of field. Um, that must be very, very difficult to do and very, very difficult to perfect. Well, I think that, I mean, the, the, what we're talking about there is, I mean, these, these lenses, I mean, that's a 400 millimeter lens with a, an F2.8 aperture. So uh, realistically, at wide open, that sort of picture, the, the sharpness will be probably sort of like from his face to his chest will be sharp and after that it all just goes out but what you're doing is you're isolating the subject by doing that so that that gives it that sort of three-dimensional impact so often we're shooting rugby at night or in very low light conditions so we're always shooting as wide open as you can so that allows you to freeze the action and get rid of the backdrop what I love about that is that some people will be thinking you're talking another language <laughs> and then there'll be <laughs> photography enthusiasts will be sort of rubbing uh. their hands against their thighs thinking yes this is what I want to hear all the technical stuff right let's get the next picture up okay so this is Shauna Brown playing for the the women's team um, and again they're talking about uh, what makes a good picture it's it's being able to see the face so as you can see here you've got two faces in that one's you know Shauna obviously taking the ball on into contact so very determined nice headband and always a very strong hair game <laughs> uh, and of course you've got the the woman player there who's making the tackle who's sort of hanging on to her calf for dear life hoping that she can stop her progression so I think that's a good example of uh, a how uh, impactful rugby can be and particularly the women's game we've seen you know we've got a particularly good team at the moment and it's uh, quite a new venture if you like and how well that's been going uh, it's just a nice picture it's interesting you talk about the strong hair game I remember having a <laughs> conversation with the TV presenter Radzi Chinyangania and he described his afro as great branding <laughs> <laughs> right what's the next picture we've got here then four halfway through okay so Mike Brown uh, celebrating after we beat Exeter here at the Stoop. I think it's a couple of seasons ago now. And this is the picture I talked about earlier that they put up outside the uh, away dressing room just to remind those visiting what they're going to face. So Mike Brown, probably one of the most competitive people I've had the pleasure to work with. Um, and it's all there, isn't it? He's really letting it all out. I mean, this is a guy who's won Grand Slams with England but and played 300 and almost 50 times for the club as it stands. So very passionate and it's sort of just, you know, he's just letting it all out there, I guess. How close were you there? Well, that's on a very wide angle lens. So, so when a match finishes, you tend to I head down to where the tunnel is. So if we're victorious, you get down there because you want some nice reaction pictures. So that's on a sort of like an 11 to 24 millimeter lens. So that's probably within about sort of three to four feet of him. Okay, so not like we could do now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> changes, changes. It's all on long lenses these days. All right, next picture. I'm absolutely loving this. What a fascinating conversation to have. Oh, right, the so, famous. Steph in so action. So there it is, yeah. So Marcus Smith, who, um, well, 
as you probably remember, Dimitri was injured in a game two, three seasons ago. And Marcus came off the bench and since then hasn't really looked back, has he? Um, well, I was talking about players that you look out for. This guy is one of them because, again, he's an amazing skill set, I would say, and uh, someone that can do an awful lot of things. And um, I think that just captures him. I mean, imagine being a defender facing that situation. I mean, which way is he going to go? Um, yeah, he's he's quite quite the player, I have to say. Um, I mean, we've seen tries recently in the last few months. An amazing try scored here in the evening. You know, his, his chip and chase game, everything about him. I mean, he's he's a problem for the opposition, I would say. I'd imagine that photo is a real testament to your skill level because if I tried to take that photo, I wouldn't know which one he's going to step and I'd just have a blurry stand in the background. Well, <laughs> right, <laughs> what's the next picture? Goodness me, yes. now that is a lesser yes. spotted sight. Looks fantastic though, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, that's a very nice picture. I mean, we talked about earlier about um, tries are very important news-wise and both for content for the website and social media, but getting a try and a celebration in the same picture is a, is a bonus because it's sort of saving you a job. Um, this, I think, is against Bristol, and I think Ross Chisholm did a lot of the donkey work building up to this, and Brownie has ever managed to get on the end of it, and there you go. Um, yeah, it's him giving it the large one, as you would say. Uh, interestingly enough, when you look at it, there's a little bit of light being reflected off the ad boards back into his face. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's really even a nice portrait of the guy, to be honest. <laughs> Beautiful composition. Interestingly, it's a celebration there. I wonder with the current COVID legislation whether or not that would be too far and you get penalised for it. Either way, brilliant photo. Uh, we've still got a couple to go as well. Let's have the penultimate one up. Okay. Right, so, so one of the busiest and indeed most stressful days of the year is headshot day and portrait day at the club. And this was at the SSP. Um, and we had myself and another photographer from Getty working on this. Um, we shot about eight and a half thousand frames in the day. So every player has to be shot in home and away kit, various portraits, stuff for social media. Uh, and of course, working with rugby players, they're not small blokes. So <laughs> we're normally set up so you can get three people wide on a backdrop. But in this instant, Chris Robshaw wanted a picture of, of the entire back row together <laughs> for that season. So we've ended up with this, which <laughs> is one of my favorite pictures, I have to say, from my time at Quinn's. Um, they're actually look, trying to look quite serious, the main body, but then you've got Jackman there on the corner, who's, before he's joined the group, has done that. Um, I really like it, because it, it, it tells you about, A, them as a group of, of players and mates that obviously train and work together all the time, but also it's the environment. So it's, you can see we've got a backdrop, but you can also see we're in a sports hall and there's just bits of netting up in the background. So it's sort of unglamorous in some ways, yet the lighting is actually really quite nice on it to make it glamorous. So it's a, it's a bit of a contradiction, really. Tell you what is glamorous is Robbo's tan and hair <laughs> in that picture. But also these are, these are nice moments as well. We were talking about the memories that you create. Not all of those lads are still Harlequins and they can look back at that or fans can look back at that and they can see that unit, that back row unit and it takes you to a place and it gives you a bit of an insight into their characters and sort of what was going on at that moment as well. Yeah, I'm very conscious of that actually. I think when players, you know, certainly when players get their 50th or 100th appearance for the club, always try and, you know, we, we focus on them during the match to make sure we get some good pictures. We also, you know, like Robbo, his family were here for the last match he, his appearance and obviously it's, it's, it must have been quite upsetting for him to have played here for so long and be in an empty stadium so we, you know you get them together for a group picture so we're very conscious of the fact that you know these are going to be their memories of their playing days so you try to do the, the best by them to make sure they get something special from that moment final picture then honestly I wish this was an hour special and we could go through the ages okay, but so here glory. are the girls the women's team so uh, again I, I think DHL will probably like this because it's a perfect <laughs> bit of sponsorship there for them but um, I think it encompasses to me a lot about what the club is about and about uh, playing with your mates and winning with your mates and I think there's elements of that it's just a you know it, it's a great memory I and mean, this is when they've they've got through to another final 
uh, to play for the title. So it's just a nice picture. And I mean, you know that they are working very hard. It's like we said before, it's a relatively new project and they, they've seemed to have come together and gelled very quickly. So it's, it, it's just a good, fun picture. Currently top of the league. Hopefully in a couple of months' well, time, you'll get to take a picture of them actually lifting that Allianz Premier 15s trophy. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves, shall we? No, but I mean, that would be fantastic. Mm. And I think one of the things as a photographer you want is to, to witness those moments and, and capture the excitement of winning a cup or a trophy because um, you're going to get some great pictures, ultimately. Thank you so much for this chat. Hopefully we get the chance to do it again. And um, if you have enjoyed it and you've got a great image that Steve's taken over the years, make sure you share it. Make sure you tag us and him in it. And if you do see him when you get back to the stoop, make sure you uh, say hello and give him a nod as well. Steve, thank you so much. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure to chat there to Steve. What a brilliant guy, and he does a brilliant job here. Taking all the snaps for Harlequins. Now we're back underway in the second half. We welcome back Chippy and Luke, who found me a coffee as well. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Cheers. Uh, no score so far in the second half, but a pretty frantic start, as we'd expect. Um, very, very important passages of play coming up here, both. Yeah, 100%. Obviously, the start of the each half is like a massive period, mm -hmm. like just for kind of mental stability more than anything, isn't it, Luke? Just yeah, I think this start is going to be it's going to be a really intense. How we're going to go on? I suppose it's always the first how you start and how you finish, really. Frustrating to concede just before half time on, Aaron, as well. Shades of Bristol there. Uh, that is uh, the man yes, who's Aaron. just come on. Uh, Straight break out the tackle. So Aaron's come on for Lewis Liner. We don't know if that's tactical or injury related, but another good 40 minutes in the tank yeah, for young lovely Lewis. Marcus, lovely Marcus. Little dab in behind. Brilliant, oh, good shot. Brilliant. That's excellent. That's excellent. Interesting after all of that discomfort we saw in the first half, Caden is quite heavily strapped on that left hand now. And yeah. Is he out of position or has he gone onto the right wing with Aaron on the left? Is that yeah, I think that would be. Go on, Thomas. And then I think with the ability to keep Aaron at fullback as well, yeah. he brings Brownie onto the front line. St Steely's loving a counter up today, isn't he? Yeah. It's a good, a good amount of energy, is what we need. No. He's really? Oh, it's unfortunate, Lord, eh? They will think it was uh, boulders. We yeah, just, but I thought boulders was just out the sides there. Mm. God, I'm really going to have to warm up here. Yeah. So I don't know about you lads. I'm genuinely in. I've got two coats on. I've gone for it. Oh, look at these. We've got more photos coming here. I love this. Keep them coming in, everyone. Was that 2014 there on the left? Right? Chris Robshaw with a big beard. Well, we've asked people to just send in their favourite pictures oh. as Harlequins fans, so we might even go further back than Cheers. that. James Chisholm. <laughs> big smiles on the He looks faces. quite lean there, Jay Chis, doesn't he? Looks like Lord Voldemort <laughs> with a beard. Lord A's going for the Voldemort, isn't he? Go on, Stevie. Lord, Lord is just unfortunately doesn't have a choice. So yeah. He's just bold. He keeps on top of it though, doesn't he? Yeah, him and Aaron have very strict shaving schedules. Do they do like the brush on the head to open up the pores and all of that as no. well? I think Aaron gives Lord a bit of a hard time for uh, not shaving as regularly as he should. Oh really? Um, so I think he's trying to whip him into shape like that. Whether his shoulder doesn't look too great there. Eh? Get over him, get over him. So he can hit a pigeon then. Yeah. yeah. Get him, Cage. You got him, Cage. Lovely, Joe. You were allowed like to retake the kick if it hits a pigeon. Go on, Thomas. Go on, Thomas. How long oh, has he got to go on? He's going to pin it back that corner, isn't he? He's, uh, I think, Thomas, he gets a lot of praise for a lot of things, but he's perhaps a little bit underrated over the ball, isn't he? He does very well at the breakdown. Yeah, for a big fella to get down so low. Yeah. Yeah, that's that hit. I thought he caught it by his ear. Yeah, it's like hitting he was, straight in the face. Like he was holding a boombox. Yeah, <laughs> did you hear a real loud bang? Scoreless so far in the second half. They're seventeen twelve. Wev looks all right again. Yeah, Wev has the ability it? to just forget about these things somehow. Is that lack of intellect or is it? He's got. He's gone up there. Wev's has gone up so early. Oh my god, he's quick. Oh wow. 
Steely, that is unbelievable. Have you got away with that again? Scott Steele is work great. He's second to none. He works unbelievably hard. I don't know why the guy didn't go straight for the corner. Oh, I mean, yeah, I'm, not that I'm a finishing expert, but he looked like he had the wheels. The though. thing is, with Brown, he's a very good um, shepherder. Yeah, <laughs> he's like Brownie wants him to For run shepherd. to the corner so he can make that tackle. Shep- Stepping back on his inside is tough. Shepherd. <laughs> that won't be going on my uh, <laughs> comms highlight reel. <really. laughs> Who have you got coming up on seventh heaven? Oh, well, we're in a bit of sabbatical because Joe Burns has been a lazy so and so. Come uh, on. No, I can't, I can't slag him off. Come on, get up, get up, get up. <laughs> I don't really know yeah, who's Yes, Langy, well done. Great turnover. Very much. And once again. So not that I'm in the habit of plugging other people's hard work here, but uh, if you're a fan of Harlequin's Live, then you'll definitely enjoy the 7th Heaven podcast. It's a good one. And Lord knows Marla gets enough publicity yeah. for his podcast, no, so yeah. it's nice to know that other people have got good that's projects right, on the right. go too. Got yeah, a podcast you want to plug, Luke? Or? Mm, um, actually, my friend does do a podcast back home. I think it's called The Purposeful Pursuit, and it's just a podcast where... About people's journeys and success and yeah. lifestyle plans and stuff, and I think it's just up and coming. So if you what want to I, give that a good listen to, what I want to. Is, is Chippy talking to Brian Habano. That's yeah. what I want. Uh, okay, yeah. Doing his NFL dream team. That's it. Stuff. That was good. Yeah. Uh, Tom Parton is rapid, by yeah. the way. He's Very a little, quick. bit of Tom there, but Steely just the the old hair and tortoise there. Never give up, <laughs> did he? Yeah, Steely. Got back. Not that I'm calling Steely a tortoise by any stretch, he's quick. Speaking of giving up, um, what do you think about lads who chase back in sevens? Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I don't love it when you get tackled over the line, though. there's no need for that. I think once you're over the line, that's it, game yeah. over. <laughs> Gentlemen's. Gentlemen's, yeah. Um, no, I love a chase back. Do you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But to be fair, when they come off, some of the miracle saves <laughs> are amazing. The Fijian boys are good at it. They, if, you run in, if they're running behind you, they just bop the balls out your arm. So you've got the ball under one arm, they can come in behind you, you don't even know they're out. Boop, gone. You're still a little giggle, and they're off. Well, Ellerington's down getting... Well, he's just back up, actually. Let's have a look at a few more pictures. Oh, superb. I love that. Shiny legs there. Yeah. yeah. Nice chugger. Oh, chugger. Perhaps get up, man. Get up. Same get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Wow. Oh, shot. James. Langy knocked That's out. That's Langy. Is, is he knocked out or is it his shoulder? So. Either way. He's, he's just in. having a tough run of these hits. You had a couple of them against Chiefs, though. Luke. Yeah. It was, looked absolutely no, brutal. Yeah, Langy is not good, I'm afraid. Can we stop the game, please? Thank you. No, oh, they Langy. don't replay that either. Yeah. No one wants to see that. And no, I wouldn't mind just on a personal level for Lane. Just one day he'll find that really quite funny. He's a elbow, big boy. He took an elbow there. Big boy. The difficulty is, is you know, that technique isn't, you know, it's not like he was in a bad position to make a tackle. Or it's just forces, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. It's momentum, isn't it? Yeah. Laws of physics and all that. Oh, a photo of a photo. Do you know, it's nice to see people actually having printed mm. photos in their in their houses. Though you don't see much of it anymore. It's like me in the back there with a the great jumper. I was thinking that. Yeah. I thought, when would I go? <laughs> <laughs> you think you're such a celeb that people go to the stoop and they want a picture no, I th- of you? No, I thought I sent one in. I thought I can remember sending one oh, in. It's yeah. Marchy on his way to court. Look, there he is, Joe. Right, so I think Taps is inevitably going to be coming on in the centres. Yeah, just hope Langley's all right. Yeah, that looked, that looked tough come the end of it. I think when he tried to get up, that was the one that didn't yeah. look great. Mm. Uh, he's on his feet, which is good. Yeah, but it's the thing with the... I, whenever I have to speak to the young lads about concussion, so you can go through the rest of your life like with a sore knee or a bad hit, but you've only got... Because you've got yeah. another, you've only got one brain. Yeah. And I mean, you want to be able to... You can't, there's no point being a hero and coming back. You no. need to you take it seriously. And I think I'm glad the game's going that way as well mm-hmm. at the moment. The more press about it, the better. And it frustrates me when you get fans in inverted commas saying, oh, you know, they signed up for it, it's part of the game. It's, mm. it's, it's not part of the game. No. Yeah, that's a really difficult, difficult statement. I don't understand where yeah. people have got the yeah. thought that you don't, you don't sign up for injuries that, that yeah. are... Uh, 
potentially life threatening. You sign up, you understand the physicality of the game and things like that, but you don't sign up for a brain injury. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. If someone says that's a brilliant brain injury. Just quickly, do you remember when? Um, do you remember when Chippy was talking about all the healthy snacks that he brought for himself? Yeah. Oh, no, those are for you, Dave. I brought them for you. Yeah. They're for you. Yeah, I don't like. Yeah, you don't like cola bottles. They're my least favourite. Oh, are they? What's yeah. your favourite? Uh, fried eggs. Oh yeah, oh. I think from what I remember from when I was a kid, obviously. Oh yeah, for you. oh you don't have them. <laughs> You're <laughs> such an fruit. athlete. Oh, wow. <laughs> just um, get the, the extra protein in, like from from fried eggs. You see, I'm just an athlete, so even with sweets, I'm just thinking about protein intake. <laughs> right, three points on the offer here. Yeah, I think it's right that we take it. Yeah. Reset. Keep it ticking over. Um, we were talking about weight earlier and how it shocks me that. Caden's 100 kilos because he's what five foot three and a half something like that. Is he 100 clicks? He, he, said, he says 100, 100, 100 clicks. What are you at the moment? 107. Oh, are you? Yeah. But uh, I'm like a Caden, if someone took a rolling pin to him and rolled him out, <laughs> I think that may be me. Same speed. <laughs> Not Same joke. speed. <laughs> I'm a dreamer as well. Great strikes. Oh, yeah, I'm just nice. here plugging yourself away here, aren't you? <laughs> Short term deal, Luke. Highlight <laughs> reels and podcasts. And what next? Yeah. What next? We'll Rugby. start talking about your gym scores in a second, I think. Rugby entrepreneur Richard de Carpentier. <laughs> <laughs> a jack of all trades, master of none. If you ever need someone to operate some kitchen scissors, he's your man. Oh, yeah. Right then, 20 points to 12. A little bit of breathing space. Oh, we've got some score updates. Oh, no, man. Come on. These things we just don't... We, we put pressure on ourselves by our inability to exit. I think that... This is going to be interesting to see what they do here. Yeah. I, they've got to give the sticks, haven't they? Surely. Is it mm-hmm. penalty? Was it penalty? Yeah. 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 Oh, free kick. That's frustrating. He knows. That's but that's right, that's good. Right. He'll be back. Who's got a better tash, Luke? You or Lorde? You know the thing with Lorde's tash is it's actually come along massively. I or... thought you were going to say the thing about Lorde's tash is it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, I've got a little scar on my left side of my mouth, so I can't really grow down the sides. Okay. But Lorde has really been able to put them down, which I'm quite jealous about. Who's got the better tash, Chippy? See, I <laughs> think this is an unfair contest because Lukey's got hair and it detracts from his tash. But Tommy's the only thing he's got going is that tash on the yeah. hair, hair, hair-wise. So yeah. I actually, Luke, yours is quite consistent. Yeah, I've had this tash for a long... Well, yeah. obviously shaved it off to do November again. Yeah. But I try and keep it... No, yeah. Annually. I've had it for quite a while. Do you remember that breathing space we had 20 seconds yeah. ago? That's gone. So. Oh, memories. That's good then, easy. Steve Maffey looks like he's got his lunchbox under his uh, left <laughs> arm here. <laughs> Can you talk about snacks? All <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, so easy's on. Right, everyone always describes easy as an exciting player. Right? Yeah. yeah. What does that mean? Because he bangs people. He's one of those people who can bang, like absolutely bang people. He's an exocet missile. He's a very, very explosive athlete. Yeah. Honest. And you've seen him do some unbelievable things. Mm-hmm. Who's that right through the middle of that mall there? That's good. And he's got good feet as well for a big man. Yeah. One of you. Nice. Very, oh, great oh, good hands. Come on, Benny Come on, Marcus, put it back down there. Oh, yeah. that's just is he crossing ball. again? Jeez, the difficult thing is there is if you if you do nothing, mm-hmm. then, then you kind of get shouted at. Marcus will say, "I need you to offer something," and then when you both try and offer that's something different, that's when those things occur. Mm. Well. But this is about how we react now because I think we've All Dina. we've kind of put ourselves under a lot of pressure. Mm-hmm. We haven't. They've not really building too much momentum. But in this middle third, we're kind of giving away silly errors that give them opportunities. If someone as electric as Marcus, when you're out there, you've just got to let him do his magic and then pick something off him, yeah. I think. Yeah, it is difficult because... <clears throat> Inside. Little trick play, that's lovely, Steely. Nothing gets past Scott Steele, to be honest. Nothing he doesn't notice. They are 
producing some quick ball here and I don't like it. Yeah, we need to get off and stop someone now, stunt someone now. Is it Billy Meeks has come on, is it? Yeah. That's got a bit slower. We'll hopefully get some organisation, get some line speed now. Yes, well, great go. shot. It's a good shot. He's just fumbled that. You can, you can see it on his left hand side. Sir. Well done, Domers. It's nice to see Domers' big shot on his right shoulder. I say to him a lot about. Well done, easy. Swim under easy. Got some big shots coming in here. Oh, it's good, Dean. I would just if need we to. Take a, if we take a win out of this, this will really change the momentum, I think. Lovely Simo. Stay organised indeed now. Just Simo yep. being heavy again. Oh, Come on, keep going. Lovely, brilliant shot. Thomas and Lorda, that's outstanding. That's our main aim is to fight to get yes. the shot. Lovely, Joe. And that's the win you were talking about. Yeah, see, this is how it's... Things like that, yeah. Go on, just offer him, offer it. Go, oh, that's I was thinking. Go on, Aaron. Go on, Aaron. Oh, that's a very, that's a very really good tackle. We'll go back. That's a really good tackle. Is Domas all right? Yeah, I'm probably tired. You'd imagine. It's been a lot of rugby. I mean, I know we've yeah. had the break and whatever, but but him and Webbs have started every game this season, haven't they? That's the thing. It is a lot, isn't it? Mm. As a rugby player, you want to play every single game. But the difficulty you have is that sure. it's becoming a game where you. Physically, you can't afford, like, you can't play every single game. So I think, there's quite a few of them have, though, because I think Marcus has as well. Yeah. Balders and Vilko have started every league game, too. Marcus is an incredible athlete for the size of him, yeah. the way he recovers and his ability to just be 100% mm -hmm. all the time. And he goes through some collisions, because obviously as teams will watch us and things, you... Th Every team wants to target the 10 and try and take the playmaker out of things. And the way he deals with that and has the ability to recover every week is impressive. Right then, little break in play here. Quinn's 20, Irish 5. Remember, Quinn's members, you can enter the code coming up on the bottom of your screen now. Quinn's Irish 25. Get yourself some exclusive membership rewards points. Robson. Got your membership rewards points, nice. No, no, I don't know. No, I haven't. No. I, oh. I don't know. Do we get stuck that, into that, mate? Oh, yeah. Anything for free? Yeah, that's true. I will take a freebie. Good set of eyebrows coming I'm going to keep these gloves, so <laughs> that's a freebie as well. Mate, you're not keeping those gloves at all. <laughs> Steph Levis gave them back. Did he? Then again, yeah. he's got more money than you. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> so there you go. You've got more money than me. Um, Steph, I can pay for that. If you've got a question for either of the lads, then you can ask the experts in association with Charles Stanley. We've got Luke and Chippy here through till the end of the match. So if you do have a question, please them, make it good and I'll pitch it to them. Other than that, it's just going to be Chippy plugging his business ventures. Yeah, so, goodness. Uh, we can't talk about something else, aren't we? Good shot. Oh, good off there at the back door. Right, okay. That's the thing. Just keep going now. Keep, getting, keep coming up. Come again. Lovely. There are some serious shots going on here. Lorde is. It looks like someone tackled Lorde after he mm -hmm. made the tackle. What was that? That's cradling him now. Get up, get up. Oh, here we go. What's wrong with that? That's not. That's not, not oh, man. That's a difficult I decision, think. though. Well, he, the, the referee. Oh, they knocked the back. Off white, yeah. Off white, he just yeah. said. So the, so the referee so has a signal for advantage and he's just made a terrible decision. Yeah, so it's off-white. So it's off-white, so Domas is away. That's bad, that, you know. He never touched it. Uh, so he hasn't touched it. He, yeah, so he's... Oh, come on, that's just a bad decision. That's a seven-point decision. I don't think Domas is scoring yeah, for that. Come on, mate, he's fastest number eight I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, oh, don't start that. Chippy will start begging the difference. Oh, no, he's yeah. quick. He's quick. He's, quick. <laughs> he's like, did you, did you not know that I'm actually Thomas, number eight? Yeah. Thomas quick. I can actually play number eight, and I'm the, as fast as Caden Merley, apparently. So. <laughs> no, I said I wish. I said. <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> uh, changes wish for them. They've out. got Goodrick Clark and uh, Simmons coming on. Dave, eyebrows. <laughs> Long eyebrows on him. Look at them. Are they groomed? Are they pink? nice. What are you saying about them? The nice eyebrows, Jamie. Look, look, look at him. So, the disaster, I'm always looking at disasters here, right? So, the next 30 seconds, yep. 
Irish penalty at the scrum, kick to the corner, score from the line Oh, no, no. Why would you think like that? Being, being positive here. This is I'm gonna be thinking, if you look at the size of that scrum. gap between 12 and 13, I'm thinking Joe Marchand's probably going to slot himself right through that. And then if Joe doesn't, if they don't give it to Joe and he goes through, then 13's going to step in and Marcus will be around the outside. That's it. Keep that uh, mic a bit closer oh, sorry. to you. Sorry, but only because we've got the fans. Oh, his lunchbox is still there. Look, <laughs> CV. The old Capri Sun's gone everywhere. <laughs> oh goodness me! Loving. Well, you're just places. after a job here, aren't you, mate? So you come in. <laughs> what for? Packing CV's lunchbox. In. Yeah. Well, next week it'll be like, oh, needs must. <laughs> Short term contract. <laughs> Short term contract. <laughs> That's what the seventh heaven pod was for. Plug in the fact I didn't have a job. And we all had time on our hands. The next home game will be, I'm afraid Dave's not available. Yeah. <laughs> Chippy's going to take over <laughs> on probation. Half rates of that. If it goes well, it could be around for the foreseeable. Right then, in it comes. Tell you what, when, when the, the sky's a bit moody, there's a little bit of atmosphere here. It looks yeah. like it. I feel like the ball would be quite wet. Now. Yeah. Ooh, oh, oh, there shit. we go. Yes. Yes. The bus is full. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Get up, Caden. Get up, Caden. Good more, good more, good more. Someone come with Caden. Brilliant, Steely. That's difficult there for Caden when you're running that. He's moved in there. He's got. Ollie, uh, Ollie Hassel Collins is running a very smart blocking yeah. line. Put him out, put him out, put him out. Oh, is he oh, out? No, I think somebody's knocked that on somewhere. So, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. Um, that Marchie hitting that line was a bit much, wasn't it? Yeah. Boss was full there. <laughs> As a 13, you love those lines when you get the opportunity to either attack space or you get someone on a, on a poor shoulder. Mm -hmm. And you can just... Go on, Archie. Although Joe is a bit more elusive and he likes to run through holes and stuff, it's good to see him running, running over blokes. Come on then, Archie. So that is Webb's race run. He's put it out there again today, hasn't he? So. Yeah, the work that lad goes through. Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a phenomenal athlete. The way, he, like, not just the miles he puts in, the like, the, the time he puts his time and time again, he puts his body on the line. Mm -hmm. Like, it's. I've never, I've never. I think he's the most like attritional player I've ever met. For in terms of the science of sport these days, we have gum shields that. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Ball, bomb shouting. We have gum shields that measure forces. Oh, do you? Okay. So in terms of when you take collisions and contact and things, it measures the force if you do that. Way. So they can start to monitor the amount of forces that athletes go through. Great kick. Great kick. Great go kick. On, go, on, go, go, Caden. Oh. He's talking about the ball, sir. Chugger's been watching a bit of too much of Celtic there. <laughs> yeah. Give the old... Uh, yeah, and so with the gum shields, you yeah. showing that Webb was the highest number of forces they've ever seen in a rugby player. Really? His forces were that high for the collisions he makes. Um, and it started to really tailor. See, he's tackled off, off the ball. ball hmm. Here's a question for you. If Glenn Young was a footballer, who would he be? Crouchy, probably, the size of him. I've no. seen Chugger dance. Oh, yeah. 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 That's lovely, Chugger. Talk about him some more. Yeah. I think he's someone like, someone like Tony Adams, like an <laughs> old-school centre-back. God, now we're loves, really, loves, now loves we're the really bigging him up, aren't we? <laughs> you think he's going to walk through the water? Oh, come on! Come on, on Simo. Play on top, play on top now. Right, boys, got to get something here. Joe, that's a great carry. That's a great Hands carry, Joe. He's got to get out of the way. Caden's oh, wide. Yeah, well. There we go. We're we're on the line. There, aren't we? Right. Ask the right question, please, referee. Ask the right question. Yeah, is there any reason why he got stitched right up against Bristol? Didn't yeah. We? Goodness me. Okay. So you, you can't. 
You can't hear the referee, can you? No. No. Can't no. you? Um, all right, then we've got a question while we wait for the decision from Brad Knight on Facebook. Aside from Marla, who's the biggest joker in the dressing room? Hmm. Tex? Yeah, yeah. Te- uh, That's a try. Depending on what you define as joker, I suppose, if it's... Tex is always laughing and making jokes. Yeah. Um, Great character, isn't he? James Lang loves to I'll try and was he not play a it? few jokes, magic tricks on people. Magic tricks? James Lang loves magic, actually. If Does he has a chance to... He's not, his sleight of hand is slowly improving, but <laughs> it's good to see. Oh, do you know what? I've got, I've got a proper soft spot for magic. I absolutely yeah, yeah. love it. Oh. Maybe you should teach Langy. Maybe not at the moment. I'm not sure his head is... His no, head's the, quite ready for... Well, maybe he might fall for one of my tricks then. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll get Langy on the show doing yeah. some magic. The, the boys once, last year, when they went to Clermont away, Yeah. Uh, Langy took his cards and he was deep into his magic. <laughs> and uh, Tex, he showed Tex a magic trick. And everybody, and Langy's sleight of hand is not good. So everyone knew that he had fixed the cards and things. <laughs> And Tex was amazed. When, when really? Langy showed him it was his card, <laughs> he was amazed. He had no idea how he managed it. Oh, Tex is a great character to do this show with because yeah. he lives every contact, every everything. He, we, said, he, he said he was talking in change rooms and I said I've got Quinn's live again. And he said he did all them back on because he swore on the yeah, last he, one. he wouldn't stop party yeah, mouth. It is difficult. This has got to be a penalty. Here we boys. go. Here we go. Yeah. Advantage come in. Come on in, Tom. <sighs> All right, that's a start. Another one. We've got him. We've got him at scrum time, you know. As obviously you've heard Adam Jones point out. Well, we got Bob no, on the no, screen no, there. No, no, no. I think we could probably scrum again, possibly. Yeah, scrum again, boss. That's a cracking photo, isn't it? Look at this one, lads. Oh yeah, look at him. Social distancing there. No, no social yeah. distancing. Isn't that guy dressed up as Adam Jones in the front row as well? Right, another scrum. He's here for another 20 minutes, fans, if you're interested in these <laughs> jokes. <laughs> <laughs> no, fun bus. Some kids doing the eyebrow, the yeah, Joe Marler how, brow. How is your Joe Marler brow? I'm not really sure we can define it as Joe Marla Brow with The Rock yeah. being so, oh, yeah, that's true, so yeah. prestigious at it, but... If you smell... Right, big scrum here, boys. Come on, let's get something. Another try oh, would be an absolute delight. How many... Right, so you can't... So that's two. How many times? Okay, so now I think you probably... Well, you've got to go again, haven't you? You've got to do... You must be so tiring, the scrum. You must be... Oh, getting a bit of a warning here. Next one, yellow card. Yeah, I think that's probably for the best. Card. I had an absolute stinker on commentary yesterday. Uh, did a premier fit. Oh, hang on, I'll talk about my nightmare in a minute. I think Marla's getting into it here. The old metal hip on the flank. Not adding much weight there. <laughs> if anything, you think it would be gr- a greater weight, mm. depending on the, <laughs> depending on the metal. So, <laughs> depending on where it is on the periodic table. Yeah. I wonder if it's optional. You get to choose speed or weight <laughs> when you ask for a new hip. This is frustrating now because if nothing comes off yeah. from this, we've got mm. nothing from two pens. Yeah, that's the problem. So it's, it's, a lot it's so tiring. Right then, Marla. You've got to just hope we that go. all the training the forwards do. Go on then, nah, here it goes, here it goes. Scrum. Here it goes. That's a brilliant scrum. Yes. You have to be looking at going underneath this. Go on, Thomas. Mm. Right, advantage is coming then. We need, we need. Yes, yes. Steve. Yes, Steve. Yes, Steve. That's brilliant. And if the advantage is coming, is he going to go back to the yellow card or. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> the referee's just warning about celebrating the try then. <laughs> So yeah, talking about the penalty try, I was at the Premier 15s game yesterday and line out drive, one of the players has gone over, I'm identifying the try score, very pleased with myself. Turns out it's a penalty try, I didn't realise for about 15 minutes. 
it's got one of, one of the Gloucester Hartbury coaches looking at me like, oh, what is wrong with you? Oh, nothing wrong with that, though, from Steely. Right, bit of breathing Steel, space. Try, try scored two appearances is an ver- is impressive stat, I think, if you look that up. Scott Steele, try scored against his former employers, two in two games. Yeah. Also true. Great nudge. Oh. So it's that 17 points from Marcus today. So he is now, yeah, he's top scorer in the Prem this season. Oh, really? 77 points. Serious player, mate. Serious player. 77 points just in the Premiership yeah, yeah just in the Premiership it's like been five, five games there's three tries though oh alright I, I prepared a bit of a quiz today for you boys oh yeah uh, so before today had Marcus scored more penalties or conversions this season um oh penalties Penalty, penalties he had scored nine pens ten conversions oh, oh suppose against Saints uh, we just scored 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 didn't we yeah, I, re- I enjoyed that one. Good take. Yeah. Yes, actually. So going into this weekend, Webbs was leading the league in turnovers with eight, but which Harlequin was second with five? Domus. Wow. The stat- the back, back, back row gnaws in. Yeah. Back row gnaws in there. He's just watching how to get better. <laughs> You've got to respect it. You really have to Good man to it. learn from. Mm. Two. Two bloody good players there. Uick legends. That's it. The Uick boys. That's what we like to see. I've got a uh, Brownie versus DC quiz prepared as well, but DC's not playing today. Some good questions in it, though. I like them. I, OK, I'll give you one. Um, who, who's had more yellow... Took, took a lot of persuaded. Who's, yeah. had, who's, had, oh, fine. who's had more yellow cards? Brownie or DC? For, D- just yellows. for Quins. DC. I, I think DC is a red herring, that one. Yeah. DC's had 14. Bloody hell. Brownie's had 9. 9. So yeah, DC. I think 9, you're right in the mix, aren't you? DC Good is jam. a bit more cynical, I think. No. Who's who scored more points off the boot in their Quinn's career? Brownie or DC? I don't know. Uh, DC, I think. <gasps> Brilliant line speed, Archie. Brilliant yeah. line speed. Good pick up. Oh, we've got advantage here, what? Yeah, yeah, they must have. Yeah, I think DC. Correct. 26 points off the boot for DC in his career and 10 for Brownie. I remember he slotted an unbelievable drop goal once. Oh, no. Just on a penalty advantage. Has <laughs> Archie been sent off? I don't think Yeah, he has. Has it? What, red? Been, yeah, no, yellow. Look, deliberate knock uh, That's unfortunate. Have we just gone three penalties, three, two penalties and an advantage in a row? And you're going to send him off for what? No, is it a high tackle? Maybe? No, it was a deliberate knock on, so he put his arm out. Oh, so. okay. Sorry, boys, less quizzing, more concentrated on the game. Yeah, I'm trying to get, trying to win the quiz. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real quiz. Yeah. Right, come on, big D now. This is, is massive. So what have we got? 13, 14 left on the clock. 12 points. Bit of territory. Big D now. Go and get low. Good day. Yes. That's, good day. That's a brilliant scrum. Come on, Taps. Oh, Go on. Touch will do. Touch will do. Oh. Is that Do- Who was that? It's Thomas. He loves right. absolutely he well in the ball here. Yeah. Right into the mix. Yeah. Not, not the one. Parton. Yeah. Oh, Brownie. This lad is quick. Good Brownie. He's, he looks quite ungainly as well, doesn't he? Yeah. Like, I just think that. I've trained with him before. At the, he did a couple of months at the sevens. Okay. Weird, weird runner. Yeah, he doesn't, as, as daft as it sounds, it doesn't look like like a powerful no. sprint. It's just limbs and must be quite hard to stop. you just got to be smart. I mean, like Brownie there was, just, uh, was clued up, on yeah. to give him, you know, make him come back in on the inside. Shot. Yes, touch. lorde has been impressive today. Yeah, he's yeah. all over the place. He always goes for a lot of unseen work, and I don't think he gets the, the recognition he deserves, to be honest. Big, big moments here. Goodness me. Low. Oh, I don't like this at all. That's all right. Oh, big Albert, was it? Oh, has he stopped him? I think he scored. Oh, oh that's right. 
that's unfortunate. We've probably got our spaces a bit too wide there. Didn't get around the corner quick enough. Mm. That's difficult. Big old goose, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. he's a big, big man. We're going to have a look at it again, I think. Brownie wasn't happy, was he, when they, he scored? Well, the AR, so I, I, for some, I don't know why you lads haven't I heard a little in your ears, try. I heard him say something. Yeah, the AR that. has gone try, try, try straight away. So we're spacing it's a good line. Bit too wide. Okay. Yeah, He's so Brownie said knock on. Go off. We've got out of that again. Some days are just your days, aren't they? Nice, no, good. Oh, come on, Can you? Oh. I think he scored the first time. Yeah. yeah. Just reached out, hasn't he? Yeah, but there, I don't think. Mm, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, they're giving that. Yeah. <sighs> Two words I hate using in this context. Game on. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Um, the beauty of. No, I suppose the only positive you get out of conceding is we immediately come straight back down there. So we get a good kick off. Yeah. Good kick chase. Straight back after him. Pin him down oh, there. He's missed, the, he's missed the conversion. See, Paddy, Paddy, Paddy. Mm. Goodness me, I'm freezing. Oh, layers, layers, layers. That's got, good I got my t shirt tucked in, zip up hoodie, jumper, coat, gloves, hat. I'm still freezing. 27 20, 10 minutes to go, 14 on the park. Bit of territory here. Who's that on? Oh, Jordan's on. Yeah, both props are on. Oh, Jordan Simon's and Simon. As well. It's been a good shift from the props today. Yeah. Yeah. And Jordan and Simon are going to add a lot more, a lot more heat. So hopefully the scrum stays what the same. Kick. Brilliant kick. Get up, Aaron. Is he taking it? No. He's... Well, it... Go on, Aaron. Drop now. Drop now. <sighs> oh, good. What do you reckon the temperature is at the moment? Very cold. You need to do that Instagram thing. You know, take a picture of it. Says the temperature. <laughs> That's how I did That's the scientific as well. Why do you have to do... There's an app on your phone which tells you what the weather is. Get up, Aaron. Great. That's a knock-on, then. Yeah. 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 That. That's a great place to attack Take here. That. What if I got that can warm you up, mate? I've got a thicker pair of gloves here. No, nah, it's all good. I'll... You a cat. Yeah. You should, you be, you should cat, be wearing mate. the cat today, mate. I know. What have I got? I've got a... You're too trendy with your white daps. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He is. Tra your extra white daps. Bleachers are made. Bleachers are made. You look like somebody who DJs in a club that... <laughs> in Mexico. That, that me and you aren't cool enough to get invited yeah, yeah, to. Too, yeah. <laughs> Would we get ID'd? Just, just, sorry, lads. <laughs> yes. Sorry, lads. Not tonight. Yeah, you look like... If you turned up looking like that picture, you certainly wouldn't be allowed in, would you? <laughs> no, you You're working on the door, you would. Real trouble. Trouble. Yeah, the, the kind of nightclub that doesn't have a name and people only sort of ethereally find out about. Aaron Morris packing down on the flank there and I think he's got it incredibly wrong and Thomas has had to just uh, <laughs> let him know where to latch on. So I'm gonna... hey, still a dominant scrum, that though. Yeah. Just, hold, just hold this Where's bit. the ball now? There you go. Good pass. Are you allowed to just grab his... He's grabbed the leg, sir. Was it? Offside? Two times. Mm -hmm. Ah, who's offside? Let you me have to deal with it. Your touch judge. That AR on the far side is a real grass. I'd th if you look at this, I don't know... Aaron, see, that's the problem there. Aaron, see, Aaron's at flank. He just need the ball back forward there. Yeah. Ah, so back in the that's frustrating, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Then. And this is where we go wrong. No, this lads, we got this, don't I think, yeah, was it? No. But this is where unforeseen circumstances mm -hmm. have put us back down here. But like, it's not Aaron's fault there, because no. he's no. never been on the flank before. But it's Every just... back will be going into a forwards yes. unit yes. next week. Oh, Lovely Jesus. chugger. Chugger's line out jumping is go as far as saying one of the best mm. in the league in terms of his ability to jump and get up and win the ball. Well, we were talking about this in the office before the show, and they, um, I don't know if you lads saw it on social. Good chase, Sam. Yeah, yes, Sam, well even to touch there. Yes. That is outstanding. Take your time now, lads. But they put a, um, 
they put a graphic up with the, the various leagues around the world and the, the, the money that various players get. And there are a few of the leagues. I think the French League oh, is one yeah, of them. Where the second rowers get paid yeah. the most in the league. They need it because they've all got to be massive. They've got to be 135, yeah. 140 kilos. And you think about how athletic you've got to be at that yeah. that size as well. Mm. And, and in terms of being like a line-out technician, it's not really a surprise, but it takes something like that to, to make you realise sometimes... Aaron's done well there now. We need to secure this. Easy arrows. I don't even remember this happening while we're watching all of them. I suppose that's not good. Martin lying in there. Take, sorry, take the short side, take the short side, Steely. Who's going to be easy now? Hit that. Easy, come on, easy. Someone's got to be there. No, he's off his feet. He's that's off good. his feet. Yeah, think about just kicking it back down there now. Another chase from Aaron. Come on. Lovely catch. Has he taken that? Yeah, he's oh. got it. Great work, Aaron. Full backs on the wing, lads. It's the first future. game. He's in the side, ref. Who oh, is that? Oh. Entirely understand how that's happened. So Aaron's got it. Yeah, I don't know. It just looks like it rolled in the side. Big gap. Oh, let it roll. Let in it roll. In between the two. Oh, keep going. Come on, keep going. Keep going. Go ball. Keep going. Go ball. Keep going. Bit more. Keep bit going. more. Keep bit going. more. I think that's probably one of the most petrifying things in rugby. Yeah. <laughs> I would never ever want to do that. If I was down there, I'd be diving on that. Yes, yeah, so fast. as quickly as possible. It was like donkeys years ago. Who was it? It was in a final, wasn't it? When the kick went down the wing, and then someone was waiting to put it down, and it was it one of the winger came round and yeah. darted it down. Did you ever cover the Bucks game? It was a playoff game, and. Um, I can't remember who, I think it was Bristol v Nottingham Trent. Oh, uh, no, I didn't cover it that. It went game. long, yeah. and it was going out, and the lad threw it back in between his legs, even though he didn't need to. Oh. And the other lad come and scored, and I think they lost the game because of it. Well, was that when Trent got promoted? Maybe. That's forward? Yeah, it must have been that year, the year after when they high? got promoted. <laughs> Knock on my white. Yes! Brilliant. I'm a bag of nerves here, lads. Oh, mate, I'm, I'm not sure whether I'm shivering because it's freezing or I'm shivering because I'm nervous, right? I'm shivering because it's so cold. <laughs> oh, it is cold. Oh, gosh. Well, I've enjoyed I this think today, we need lads. a promotion, Thanks, I think, company. don't we? We need a promotion to a studio or something. There's yeah, Eddie Jones. Where is he? Where is, where is that in the stand? Uh, can you hear that? What did he say? Get nine right, quins replacements off. being made. Martin on to see the game act. Yeah, that's a really nice replacement. Good play. Good shift again from Steely, though. Another good game from him. Steely has uh, been one of the players of this game, to be honest. Oh, have, you, have you both met Lewis yet? The new lad at yeah. nine? Yeah, yeah, good yeah, one. Yeah, really nice lad, actually. I met him last week. You sound surprised, um, this then, by the way. Me. You sounded quite well, surprised. Yeah, really surprised. Nice he's lad, a nice yeah. lad. <laughs> <laughs> I say he's a really nice lad. Oh, okay. The emphasis is a bit better there. All right. Apologies. Yeah. Sorry, Lewis, if you're I'm now getting <laughs> critiqued by the two. <laughs> well, we're pros of here, right? of this show. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, we'll thanks for coming on our Quinn's Live <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Benny. Hopefully, we'll get him on the show soon. Yeah. No, he's a really nice lad. <laughs> I'll keep saying it until you believe it. I feel like um, he's. I've, I've not met him yet, but judged entirely by his appearance and his demeanour and his cheeky smile. I think he's the kind of lad that, in different circumstances, would have absolutely, absolutely torn it up at the ship on a Sunday. <laughs> oh, right, now we're talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a good looking lad. I watched yeah. him train arms the other day, and he has got. Watched I watched him train arms the other day. Oh, it's it's probably my favourite thing that anybody has ever said he's on the He's crawling on the floor. Yeah. Right then, come on, boys. Lovely, you Lord Lord Day. So that's the kind of stuff there. Yeah. You don't see. Big shift from Lord Day today. Those tackles are tough. Brilliant. Oh my god, he's gone. He what was on earth? No way. Please, Matthew. Come up. on, boys. Go on, easy. Oh, is he, that could be a cynical. Just dead Aaron, dead Aaron. Brilliant, brilliant. 
how many phases is he going to let him go through here before the advantage is over? Don't bite, don't bite. Oh, Joe Marchand. <sighs> Just clinging on. Brownie, you can't. Okay, to the corner. <sighs> well, this is the ball game here, isn't it? Three on the clock. What? It's just Three one missed tackle, left. isn't it? Wow. Or two missed tackles. I didn't see who went through. Marcus went through onto the nine. Right then. Archie's back on. Jeez, that was a... I've got a feeling they might look at this, you know. They're, they're saying they want to review. Who was it? Marcus? Yeah, just... Uh, the ball. Can you play the nine once the ball's out? Yeah, of course. So what's wrong with it then? I don't... I, I, Deliberately. Yeah. So they're just saying they're happy dropped. with just a penalty, so... Drop down and slap This is massive now, lads. I was there, I know you know. <sighs> wow. OK. That's commentary 101 there, isn't it? Let's speak. Emphasise the obvious. <laughs> so it's massive now, lads. I, what's the problem there? When the ball's out? It's not... I don't think that is he's playing the nice because he slapped it down out of his hand. I'm not sure he did. Get up, lads. Get up, get up, get up. Here we go. That's a brilliant move. No. Really? What was wrong with that, Chippy? Early. I couldn't see from up here. Early. Oh, OK. But that's... OK. Well, it's 20 more dead seconds. But they messed it up the first time and executed it the second time in the first half, didn't they? Yeah. Get that, get that ruler straight. <laughs> yes. Right then, do you throw a man up here, Chippy, or do you...? Oh no, you've got a 100% winner, right? not going to... Okay. Come on, lads. Oh, around the front. Go on, get, re get around. Get, get around. around. Get low, get low, get low. Get low. Oh, no. Touch, touch line, line. touch What's line. That? No way. Oh, Let's go get it. That's the bonus point for them. Try bonus, isn't it? Is it? Uh, yeah, four... Is it? Four, four tries, one conversion, one penalty. Oh, I, oh whatever. It's the first time it's I've ever written down. Um, oh, I don't really. I've got no words for the uh, for the mall mall side of things. Twenty-seven, twenty-five. He hasn't hit many of these. Paddy Jackson needs a nudge here. He's left a few out there, so he's bound to get this. Uh, yeah, he's an experienced Tizzle. athlete, experienced rugby player. He's Probably times lads like these step up to the occasion. Miss, miss it, miss it, miss it, miss it, miss it. Yeah, he's got it. Nice. Oh, that's just straight of a dart. 27-27, oh, right then. 51 we've got seconds to go. 50 seconds to win it. We've got, before we do that, I think we've got the winner of the competition today as well. We've had you sending in your photos. Simon Bolton, a few yeah. celebration beers at the Quinn's Head after beating Saris a couple of seasons ago. Congratulations, Simon. Top Looking work, forward to having uh, a beer with you when we can. Brilliant work. Keep the ball now. Oh, so on. Simon hasn't won. We've got more photos. Right, oh. I'm going to come back to the photos because I'm concentrating oh, on the rugby here. Sorry, Simon. Because it's 27-27. And we're going to try and win the rugby match, I think. Carry it hard, Jordan. <sighs> oh, for oh, man. The rock's formed. But the that's a penalty, no? Yeah, the problem is, it's the referee. Is when do you determine that's a penalty? Well, not it's then. Here, the ref's got offside, 19 miles off. He's miles off. You've got to have... The AR's bang in line with that. I would shout, but I feel like the coaches are doing enough. Yeah, and goodness, it'll be really loud in this mic. Sorry, so, sorry, lads. Don't do that. I'm oh, goodness me. The wait for a home victory might have to be one more week. Numbers to this breakdown now. Oh, I know, we've got Marcus in there trying to clear it out. They are offside at every Wait carry. I'm not sure what this touch judge is doing. No way, that is... Uh, what I mean, are they going to just go, are they going to try and kick this to the corner and... I think they go for the sticks, won't they? Hopefully they go short and we can run it back. Where do you draw your line here? Oh, God. Right then, so we've got Parton... Parton looking at the coaching staff here for a decision. Now that time to play it. They're running the tee on. Oh, this would kill me. I don't want to finish 
finish this like this. Uh, I don't want to say what I'm thinking. What was it for? Just holding on. Not rare, not wrong. I honestly, I think, I think there were three phases with at least two Irish players offside. There, they were creeping up, stopping, and no one's even looking. Um, right then, it's a big nudge to win it. It is a big nudge. I've not really watched him kick very much. It's a big nudge to win it. Decent strike. Is no, it it's to the right, is it? What do we do here? Nice do we dig? Yeah, why not? If one man's going to do something, Caden Murley. Caden Murley? What we say? Oh, that's high. Saying? That's a high tackle, sir. Come on. I'm unsure what the fellas are going to do out here. That's another one. Oh, oh, not Caden. high for you. All right. Caden looks like a hammy's gone. It's very, very difficult. He's not just to get about to. Swear then, and I remembered what happened to the last man who swore on the pod. Axed. <laughs> He'll be back. He oh, Cades, Cades. So if this goes Cades. out, we, we can kick. We can, we can get play. time for the line out, innit? Yeah. No, 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 no. No, it needs to go out on the full. Can't tap that. That is match. a brilliant, brilliant. God, that's a good kick. I tell you what, boys, cracking game of rugby. Uh, Caden's in some severe discomfort. Hopefully, it's just like a real, he's real background. Frustrated as well. Yeah. Caden, the thing with Caden is he's so explosive that he is just open to these big injuries. Come on, boys. Right then. The... Oh, come on, the fellas. So Joe's Come gone. rain or shine, we're going to get some... Oh, no. That's unlucky, that's unlucky. Right, boys, I need you for a minute at the end of the game because we need to pick the winner of this competition, which seems strange after blowing a ten-point lead and then coughing the ball up. Right then, get over that. The ball just doesn't want to go dead, does it? Uh, boys, boys, yes, boys, get over that, get over that. Oh, no, we've got to be quicker. Oh. Is she coming to us now? Nah, just kidding. Just kidding. All right then, full time, 27-27. Uh, we'll get your thoughts on the game at some point, lads. But before we do, uh, let's go through the finalists of this picture competition then. So right, these are the finalists. Sorry, I misunderstood before. We've got Simon Bolton and the lads having a pint. Those were the days. Next Simon's finalist. Simon's got my vote already. <laughs> pint. Come on, let's keep them coming. Let's get these finalists. We've got Jim Walter. Jim's got the a happy pint days as well. Will return. Yeah, well, there's definitely a theme here. We've got wedding ring on it. He has a serious weathering on him. Oh, Jim Haystacks, Hornybrook, the little man. They've tried to cute us out with the kid. Yeah, I mean... But I... D oh, now we've got barrels <laughs> the of lead. Both buffaloes, though, so yeah. that probably writes them off. The Ewing boys will be straight on that, won't we, Chippy? <laughs> oh, and Noah, as Greg I Wallace. love this, didn't get to see his dad very much anymore, but when he does, it's straight to the stoop. That's I mean, nice. he's tugged at the heartstrings there as Noah, yeah, isn't he? Clever. And then Michael O'Connor with his actual family and the Quinns the family Quinn's as well. Family. Look at that. They're <laughs> doppelgangers, those lads. Yeah. <laughs> We got Burge Can you Tukirian. call family members doppelgangers? I don't all look alike. They look, yes. but they don't, they're not identical. Well, two of the kids are taller than DC there. That's the and then finally, we've got Victoria. It's her 39th birthday today. Happy birthday, Victoria. Happy, Cheering from happy home birthday. with the Quinn's flag. Can't wait to get back to the seat. Hey, we can't wait to have you back either, Many Victoria. Many happy returns. So right, boys, those were the finalists. Um, what do you reckon? <sighs> I'm going to have to say Simon with his mates. Well, he can't win, so... Baby, oh. baby picture. Oh, the baby picture. I got for it. I'm, 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 I'm weak to that at the moment. Let's bring, oh, yeah. Of course. So. Let's bring the baby picture back up. It's all about what we're interested in, babies and the, <laughs> the good stuff. You're a bloody lame. <laughs> so, Jack Haystack, Sawneybrook, the little man. Congratulations, yeah. Jack. You are today's competition winner. A fleece will be winging its way to you keep you warm like these lads here layered up um okay competition winner done match done stick with us we'll be getting some post-match uh, reaction from some of the players and coaches but let's get your reaction first boys the wait for a home victory goes on a little while longer um 27 27 thoughts on the game things like that are just 
don't really have many words for what happened, to be honest. We, we have such a lead, and this is probably the same against Bristol. Br- and then we put ourselves in positions where it doesn't, where we, where we give them chances to get on top of us, and that's exactly what they did. Um, there's no excuses for refereeing decisions because we should never have been in that situation. We should have closed that game out. Uh, I thought the boys worked incredibly hard. There'll be a lot of lot of disappointed disappointed players there and coaches. Um, it's important now that we stick together and review it because it's another big week next week and the week after and the week after. Yes. Do you think? Uh, just pretty despondent, like, gutted for the lads. Um, obviously the effort was there, but some of the accuracy, I mean, to, as we, we spoke about at the end of the first half, just gifting them points, like being back, like the three points, that, like for the crossing in, in our own 22 from like an unchallenged restart. It's just like little errors that we need to pick up on. I mean, there's, it's, it's no one pointing the finger at anyone. It's just gutting to be in control of a game and then not see it out. Um, lessons learned and tough lessons today learned. Um, hopefully a big learning curve for the lads that we can pick up and go again next week or whenever we play next. Well, they're out there in a huddle right now. It doesn't look to be very many smiling faces. Uh, I'll leave you boys go and get warm. It's been great to have your company. Thank Cheers. you very much, boys. Look forward Thanks to very much. doing it again sometime. Pleasure. We'll probably have to give someone else a go next time, should be. Yeah, well, but, I'm uh, hoping for some game time. <laughs> time. Hey, don't forget your cola bottles are out here, right? Oh, thanks very much. So you're out your kind. Now? Um, cheers, Luke. Well, and good luck with your recovery as Thank well. Really much. looking forward to seeing you uh, back out on the pitch. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Take your snacks with you, Chip. Come the on. Rubbish as always. <laughs> well, that is the yeah, Premiership nice. table. That's what it does to us. Bristol are out there on top after their great victory against Exeter yesterday. We're still there in the middle of the pack. Hoping to push up towards that top four, but uh, we need to close these games out if that's going to be something that's uh, that's realistic. But we're still above London Irish. Credit to them. They stuck at it and had the opportunity to win it at the end. It's not a defeat. We're always looking for positives here on Harlequins Live, aren't we? So I am heading down to the pitch side now. The lads are out there at the moment in a huddle. I'm going to try not to get in the way of the broadcast. I can see dirders and flats out there. That's usually my route too. I'm going to have to do a little bit of tap dancing here. Um, Quite a despondent team making their way towards the tunnel. I'm going to assume the position. I wouldn't... Surprise! Uh, wouldn't be surprised if they all went down. But we have got Scott Steele making his way over. Um, Steely, thank you very much for your time, mate. Difficult one that having led for so long and having so many opportunities. Um, but 27-27. What are your immediate thoughts at full time? Disappointment. Um, yeah, disappointment. We, as you said, we we had a lead in the game for quite a long period. Um, and we were just inaccurate out of our own third and then even in the middle of the pitch too many uncharacteristic errors from us a few crossing and it just gave them an easy easy into the game too many penalties in the middle third and playing against any team in this league you give them too many opportunities they will score so we put a lot of pressure on ourselves um, invited them in into our 22 and if they're going to you know, have three or four attempts at malls at five metres out it's tough for the boys up front to stop them so um, credit for them for coming back into the game but we felt that we, we helped them uh, back into the game Let's talk about what you did well today as a team, the physicality, particularly in the midfield there when they were sending those big ball carriers through. Looks like you all fronted up really well as a team today. Is that something that you've been working on in this time off? It is, yeah. But on the flip side, we, we felt comfortable in D, as you say. We were, we were hitting them backwards. And then it's one, one error in discipline in terms of someone going off their feet or giving them an easy out. Um, we were trying to say that we, we need to be patient. We need to trust our D. Um, because we felt like we had them when they were going multi-phase we could deal with that threat but if you give them field position it's, it's a lot tougher so we can take positives from it in terms of if we um, you know, keep doing what we're doing defensively and cut out them, them errors um, you know, it's, it's a starting point On a personal level today felt like you had a great 75 minutes got another try, got yourself around how do you feel your performance was? I thought I went, yeah, it was all, it was pretty, oh, sorry, it was good. Um, 
you know, it's, it's a bit tough when you're, you're defending for the majority of the game, in the second half especially, but I felt everyone's mindset and attitude in the first half was great. Um, we kept the ball for long phases, we were creating space, moving the ball to space, and we were unlucky to not score a few more tries in the first half. So um, when the breakdown's that good, it's easier for nines and tens, so that was, you know, a big, um, big effort from the boys up front. And then my try, obviously, was just off the back of lots of uh, set-piece pressure from the forwards, so that was their, their try in the end. Again, focusing on positives, it is points at home today, currently sitting sixth in the league, a lot of big games coming up. just seems like there's a bit of a, a monkey on your back as a, as a team at home at the moment, but playing well away from home. What can you put that down to? If I, if I knew, we'd be able to sort it sort of thing, but um, as you say, like... There's a lot of good things we can take from that game. It's not all doom and gloom. Um, it's just the little things that are, are letting teams into the game. And you know, like I said before, if you let any team opportunities to sort of attack you, then it's going to be hard to defend for long periods. So it's something we've got to look at. We've got to be accountable as individuals, as players, and put our hand up and say, "Yep, that wasn't good enough for me," etc. So that's what we'll be doing over the next couple of days to, to make sure we get it right moving forward. Because it's, uh, like you say, it has been a bit of a monkey on our back, especially at home. Well played today, mate. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, go and get warm because it's pretty chilly it's out here. It's freezing. It? Cheers, thanks. Cheers, Scott. Thank you very much. Are you going to come and have a quick chat to us? I'm more than happy to have a quick chat. Uh, well, we've been more than happy to have you. Um, well played today. I think it's important that we that we say that to you. Um, you went off towards the end. Was that was that injury or was that just because you played a lot of rugby? Uh, I guess I've played a fair bit of rugby and Archie's been chomping at the bit to get some game time. Um, it's obviously disappointing, but I wasn't affecting the game as much as I thought I could have done, so it was probably the right decision to, to get Arch on. It's been a, another positive performance from you, though. I mean, you've really, I say, announced yourself. Everyone already knows what you're all about, but you're currently top of the charts in terms of turnovers. How do you feel you're playing personally so far this season? Yeah, I've been waiting a long time in my career for a long run in, run in the team, so um, 23 now is probably the time I... Um, need to put, start putting good performances on the field and being top of the stats is not really much to me it's just I want to get wins for this club and unfortunately we couldn't do that today I can see in your body language and, and hearing your voice that you are disappointed today and, and I'm sure it's not just you as players it's the, it's the supporters and the coaching staff as well a lot of positives there there was a lot of good rugby play today there was Bristol last or uh, two weeks ago when we were nine nil up at half time or should have been nine nil up at half time. We were up at half time today, having played really well. We just can't close games out at the moment, which is the really disappointing thing because I feel like we're we're coming along, we're taking strides, and that last 30 minutes in games is just killing us. And we're not going to get to where we want to be if we keep ending games like that. There are, I sort of keep my eye on, on social media and we get loads of Quinns fans watching this show and they're split into two camps at the moment. Those that see the positives and see that we're close and those that are quite frustrated because, you know, if you look at the scores, it's, it's quite easy to sympathise and empathise with that. Are you confident that we are close and we can go against any team and really sort of make an impression and get results against 100%. these big teams? If you, pick the bones, if you pick the bones out of the performances... One that at the start of the season, Exeter was clearly not acceptable. But in the first half, it was I think there was three points difference, yeah. and it's just been the same story that pretty much every game this this year we've we've had a poor second half. Um, but once you pick the bones, how well are we playing in the first half? How well are we executing our game plan? We're doing it to the T, spot on. And we're getting leads, but we just can't hold them out, which is the really, really disappointing thing, and it's grinding my gears, to be honest with you. <laughs> so patience, and we'll get there. Patience, yeah, 100%. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time, mate. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you back soon, doing what you do best. Thanks, guys. All the best. So that's it. We've heard from Scott Steele. We've heard from Webbs. Two of our top performers today couldn't quite get over the line. I know you're frustrated and I understand, but stick with this team. I've, I've just got a good feeling that we're just one performance away from going on a great run and doing something special. It's not the end of the world, it's not a defeat, but we're still waiting for our first home victory here at the Stoop. Um, thank you for sticking with us and thank you for watching. We'll of course be back for the next home game. It is in the diary, but all the dates are moving because of COVID and all of these things, so just keep your eye on it. Stick with us and we look forward to welcoming you back next time. Thanks to all of those who sent the pictures in and entered into the competition. I say it every time, but I can't wait till we can welcome you back here to the Stoop and make some more memories. But until we get the chance to talk again, thank you very much. Goodbye.